I just put my headphones on and the game started whispering at me creepily and I was like, I had to come off BRB because now I'm scared. Is this one of those games? I feel like it's one of those. Hi, Freedot! 
I look like this to make myself feel better. Yeah, it's like that. All right, that's okay. Wait, Twitch isn't gonna get mad at me, right? It's not. I'm pretty sure it's not. Oh, sweet. Actually, I have no idea. Well, with a warning like this, I feel like we're on the right track. Probably. Hold on a second. My eyes are blinking, uh, linked blinking. You can't have that. If I it's just, it's just, it's just warning because child labor. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be okay. Only one of my eyes works. Did I, did I choose a bad thing? I'm already sweating. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. I've been wanting to play this anyway. Please read this carefully. This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Do you wish to continue? Yes. Is this cooking mama, but legally not? I don't think so, honestly. That walk was brutal, but this cupboard is amazing. Full kitchen, running water, it really has everything. Finally, a place I can read a good book in peace. You can tell he's intellectual because he has glasses. Question was, what am mama cooking? I kind of have a sneaking suspicion that we are cooking people. I can't wait to TA. Ah! Ah! Sorry, everyone else be the does. Mariah Carey's here. Don't worry, guys. I'm sure with a little elbow grease, you can make this cabin shine. So you volunteer in cleaning? No. It's going to say no because it has extremely anime people. Get this other gender control, you know, as if you had any control over your allergies. Yeah, how about you stop having allergies? Not much place here. Guess we'll have to go out to get what we need. Probably people. It's fly push for making stew, so let's gather up some firewood, okay? Leave that to me, little guy. Why is little guy in capitals like it's a title? Let's hide up around the cabin. I need to save Mariah and Carrie from dying in the dust. Hey! Allergies are nothing to joke about, Karen. Yeah, Karen. What the hell, Karen? Karen, what the hell? She's not dead yet, Pipsqueak. Calm down. I feel like this is foreshadowing. Right, I'll stop the being allergic to things. Damn, I wish I thought of that sooner, right? Cleaning the really form fitting apron on that girl. It has a boob shelf. It does. Thanks, Anatoly. That's not a name. Let's go foraging outside. With over 450 monsters, 900 fungi, and 70 slime molds, there's bound to be a treasure up here. You're not alright, are you? Roughing it is fun. This guy with no name that's not a name knows such a bunch of edible foods. We're in good hands. I think slime molds would be the most delicious. Um. What about the fungi? Do you know which ones are poisonous? No, but we're gonna eat them anyway. Anatoly is a Russian name. He is Russian. Okay, how do I pronounce that? Help me. I can figure that out. Give me the canary in the coal mine. I'm not ending up a corpse here. I feel like this is foreshadowing! Do you guys think this is foreshadowing? Keep both eyes open, little guy. Plenty of wolves and brown bears around. There won't be a problem. I write up 10 different techniques to incapacitate them, like playing dead from World of Warcraft. Keep both eyes open. Oh, you can go. I went backwards. Number one is... Oh, totally, oh yeah, sorry. Got carried away. I'll help him look for food. Definitely better warding off wild animals. We come 50 handy. We can always eat some of the food we bought or each other. You mean the emergency rations? Bad idea, chump. Hey, Anatoly and Mariah are getting the food. Gregor's rattling the fire. That's make, that makes you our designer designated chef. Everyone's looking at- Oh, I, I exist here? I exist in this universe? Hey, did you guys know I exist? It's quite common in Russia and Ukraine. How do I sp- How do I pronounce- Oh, help, I fell over. 
Hi, I, I apparently I exist in this universe. Very excited to try your cooking. All right, everyone, let's go work while there's still sunlight. Bye. Right, and it's only Gregor. The three eggs at the cabin, leaving you and Karen alone. I'm going to die. You may be the first to get eaten. What with you being a chicken and all? No! Why'd you snap your neck? I don't know. Hi, Nausea! Frick, you need to face us. I don't know why I fell over, okay? Oh, I'm back. My butt was in the air. It was kind of funny, honestly. Hi. I don't know why I fell over. Sometimes it just happens. Thanks for helping with the cooking. To save the game, right click or hit the escape button on your keyboard. Right click. Save. Save. This menu also allows you to adjust volume levels or exit the title screen to view unlockables. Going back to the main menu without exiting the game with you're gonna fuck it up. <sighs> you're rushing the game with us. Yeah! Do you have any experience making meals? No, I, I eat dirt pie. Yes. Will you butter them up or wind up on the chopping block? Yeah, we're gonna fucking die. Is that so? I'm looking at you. I think you'd be good at serving up food poisoning. What the fuck, Karen? That's fucking rude. I'm good at making food. This bitch, she'll be the first to die. <laughs> right? Looks like Karen will remember that. What? Go check out the living room. Let's talk later. Oh. Oh, you, you'll be the first. You never know what you'll find around the cat. Includes the secret to be rumored. Searching the area more than once. Why don't you go to try? What area you want to search first? Cupboards. Which few cursed cupboards are empty? And it's whole How do I pronounce that name? Also, I'm in the way. Also, I should just get smaller, maybe. Hold on. Oh, you. Hi, Kaisra! We can talk to Mariah. She's cuter. She is cuter. You're pronouncing it correct? Oh. Okay, I thought I was pronouncing it too hard. Anatoly. Okay, cool. And I totally must put this fly somewhere else. There's nothing but cobwebs back here. Thankfully, no spiders. There's totally spiders in there. Check the drawers. Just some dirty knives. We'll clean them. Check the cupboards again. Just some mouse turds and cobwebs. Why am I doing this more than once? You look at the woodlogs closer. This is a pile of Norway spruce! Some kind of mold is growing on this one. Maybe Karen will find it appetizing? Yes, I'm going to feed her the fucking mold. Just as clueless as it's interesting. Norway! Norway! Something is making it difficult to open. You pull it open with all your might. Whee! Cabbage! What? How many drugs am I on right now? It's time! Trumpet, sound off! Yeah. Here, fair onion is here, like my cousin Kermit says, I rise to the occasion. Oh, it's very raspberry. Potato? Cabbage stuffed me into this drawer. I'm pretty sure this counts as kidnapping. Where's the chompettes? I think you got roofied. I think what's her ass roofied me. The drugs are in the food, it saves a lot of time. I haven't even eaten yet. Good morning, Rackham Frackham. Why talk with these boring humans? All they do is give you drama. Come chat with us instead. We'll serve right recipes you could- I am so high. Stay with your secret chompette recipes. Collect them all to become a five-star chef. Here's your first recipe card. Roasted egg with sesame and pomegranate. I don't think that sounds very good. If you ever want to talk, just come to the drawer. I... Cabbage usually stands the door closed. You wonder if what you just saw was real. Yeah, yeah. Save. It's 
because he advises the muffin in the ADSI booth. It just wants to die. Oh yeah, potato is tutorial. There's so many drugs in the food. You got drug before eating them. They're just in the air. I'm slightly worried about what this means for your mental state. Yeah, me too. But only slightly. Hi, Karen. I wasn't just talking to vegetables. Hey, did you find the supplies? Did you put those in there? Dude, she's she's so sus. Shake your head. And I totally lied. He actually put them in the bedroom. Idiot. Here you go. You got the emergency supplies. Karen leaves you alone. You start a fire with some of the wood and get to work on cooking dinner. Tonight's entree, vegetable stew, and a large saucepan over medium heat. You hit some water with potatoes, carrots, and celery in it. 15 minutes, you day the... Butter. And then we saute the onions. The onions are tender, turn loose, and perfect! Next thing, some flour, salt, and pepper, and heavy cream. You don't necessarily need heavy cream to make a roux! Can we get nuggies from MC Donald? Can we get, can we get nuggies? Uh, yeah. I, I pr they probably have less drugs in them. It's giving us the whole recipe? Yeah, I do like this. You don't actually need heavy cream to make a roux, though, honestly. Oh my god, I haven't thought of ideas of movies in a hot minute. Me either. Hi, Emery! Good morning! Hours pass. But I want my meth laced nuggies, please. Blizz. More firewood than you'll ever need. We found some wild sorrel. Maybe tomorrow we'll have bigger bounty. Antoli is burying the lead. We saw a red deer. Do you want me to eat it? Mmm, Raya spotted it. Yeah, that's great. Anyway. Oh my god, Karen. Killed 17 spiders today while you're out looking at deer. Ugh. That just comes as a surprise. There's over 160. Oh my god, fucking nerd! Butt face explosion. Butt face explosion. Hi, Andy. Good morning. Eat them. Eat them all. They're made out of nutrient. Eat them, eat them all. They eat are the made spoders. out of nutrient. I make it root with canola oil and flour. Yeah, I just like butter and flour is good. And then you add the water and the spices. Oh my god. Help! I turned around again. Um. You know what? I'm gonna make fish tonight, no, and I'm gonna the batter humans, it. Not the spiders. <gasps> what if I pan fry it? Pan fry it in flour. Oh my god, I'm gonna do it! Curtis, hi! I, I don't know why I turned around. Uh, Y'all get to look at my batoot. Curtis, are you in bed? Curtis just got home. I know this because I have secret knowledge. If not, good for you. I would be in bed. No, eat the humans, not the spiders. Listen, Karen will be the first to go. It's because I'm surprised there's only 160 pieces of spiders here. 160! Don't worry, Mariah, I'm sure they're all in the bathroom or something. No, almost all of them were near the couch. Ah, I was going to sleep on the couch. That's where 16 of them were. I'm not sleeping on that couch! There's only two beds in the bedroom. Don't sweat it, Mariah. I can sleep anywhere. I'll sleep on the rocking chair. Sleep with one eye open just in case any of them swarm the couch. Thanks, Gregor. Karen and Atola, you two take the bedroom. Thanks, big guy. Jokes on you, Gregor. I always plan on taking one of the beds. Hey, Atola, snort out of the lumber yard. You were sleeping outside uh, in the cold rain. I would. This is a central seating place in my room. Hmm, bed. Yeah, yeah. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams! You turn back to your bubbling vegetable too and try a bite. This tastes pretty good. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. You cooked vegetable stew. Soon I will put Karen in the vegetable stew, and it will be Karen stew. Could put all you in there. This smells delicious. Thank you. You must be a world-class chef. Actually, it's just fucking stew. Karen takes a bite. It's planned as hell! Karen, fuck you! Why do this very uncomfortable? His shoulders are squished. Yeah! Karen, tastes like every other vegetable stew I've had so generic- BITCH! I'm taking you out. You will season my fucking stew, and everyone will be like, Wow, it's so good! And I'll be like, Yeah, I know. 
This isn't Final Fantasy 1, but the party kind of is the Final Fantasy 1 party. Yeah, with the singular party member that I hate. Oh yeah, she's the fighter, isn't she? He's wearing too tight a shirt for his build. He do be. Could probably use some meat next time. Oh, don't worry. I've got plans. Gross! For side dish, we could use some bread and eat lies vague Raveska, also known as strawberries. For oh my god, fucking nerd, just call them fucking strawberries. Not a carrot's pep squeak. Karen! Everyone laughs at Karen polite ribbing. No, she's being a bitch! It's not polite ribbing, you're being a bitch! Nothing makes you happier than cooking a great meal for friends. Discovery will be the best day you've ever had. I'm sure it can only go downhill from here. You go to bed stuffed. Deo. Like Henya says. Skid so girls get to be a bitch in 2024. Okay. Hi! Hey, you up? How'd you sleep? I was so warm last night, I didn't even need a blanket. Oh no! What time is it? About one hour until dawn. Wait, it's about dawn! Try to sleep over here! Eh. You're out of the road outside, I'm making much noise yet. We didn't bring many supplies, remember? Better get a head start on gathering food. I also can't see the trees outside right now! Gregor. Did you see any spiders last night? There was a small one in the bathroom. Eh! Actually, I did see a centipede by the sink! Mariah turns a little pale. Karen's messing with you, Mariah. Let's find more than wild sorrel today. Eh! If you're lucky, little guy, maybe I'll teach you how to catch some wild brown trout. What's with you and meat, big guy? Why is it? Is this a big kitty, little, situ little kitty situation from fucking... Tsubasa? Are you two an item? Is this a thing? Is this a kink? Dio. True Ron! Hello! The truest of Rons. Day one, Nekowark is at the foot of your bed. What do you do? Don't know. Anatoly's Herbalism book stated that there's many more species of plant seed out here. Let's leave the fish alone. You are not into meat! That's a sim! I wake up early to go fishing! Well, then get your ass out there and go fishing! Cheer up, Karen. We'll get to observe the trout at the very least. Maybe we'll get to see more red deer today. Let's not think of waste of time. Ha! <laughs> Maybe we'll find some blackthorn berries. I love blackthorn berries. Ha! <laughs> ha ha! We'll be back later. Can you watch our stuff today? No. You nod. Thank you. Thanks. Never. <laughs> Don't steal anything, okay? Oh, I will. Yours especially. I think your neck broke. I'm having a problem. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Hi, Jaten. This looks like one of the VNs of all time. She can't read without looking at the. Yeah, I gotta look at it. This is fine. <laughs> this is fine. Hi, I'm back. I want you to see my leggies. I'm gonna come up. It's like a mystery science theater. Yeah! I'll just make myself all shadowy and then I'll be like, that's me. God damn it. You nod. I do a lot of nodding. Mariah, Angela, and Gregor and Karen leave the cabin with a hop in their step. You're alone, but thankfully you have a drawer of trumpets to keep you company. I feel like we're just slowly losing our minds. Each day we ask to explore different parts of the cabin. You only get one choice, and the day will end. Choose wisely. What do you want to check out today? Mm. Bathroom. Yep, it's a bathroom. Toilet, bathtub, cabinet underneath the sink. Open the cabinet? Yes. You peer into the cabinet. You found a spider! Pretty small, but it's hairy. It's far too gross to even squish. I mean, just let it outside, man. There's a note buried in the spider web. Okay. Good day, we received a fair number of complaints from Rusana Orvich over her perceived harassment of her nephew, Marco. Rusiana alleges that you have been frightening him and are causing a public disturbance from traveling into town. Her list of complaints are as follows. Erratic shuffling, sneering at Marco in an attempt to intimidate or frighten, babbling incoherently. We understand that this is no means legal, but humbly request that you stop immediately. For all the so will result in a person in person meeting to discuss. Thank you for your time. Um, I feel like we're just this person, whoever the note was for, was just nuts. You're supposed to act in 
You're supposed to act the light. Shut up, red-haired bitch! <laughs> you take the complaint letter with you. Ah. You shut the cabinet. Hmm. What else do you want to check out? Uh, black mold, please. Doesn't look like black mold. It is. Must be residue from some old liquids. Hmm. The others should be coming back any minute now. You leave the bathroom to greet them. No, I'm not done exploring the bathroom. We're back. <laughs> Knock it off, we're at. It's pretty rare to be scared of one. It's not. <laughs> Who knew the big guy would be so scared of? S Shut up. You don't understand. I don't think anyone understands, Gregor. It's just a marmot, Gregor, not a monster. Right, laugh so hard that your ears ring. She is a bitch. How long were you exploring the bathroom? Two minutes. It takes you five minutes to explore black mold. Also, I would like to turn around, please. Why am I so turned around? Everything's fine. If you turn around, how are you supposed to read the game? You're right. You're right. I, I just I want to look at you all. It's not like you have eyes in the back of your head. I mean, they kind of go back there sometimes. They kind of do. Uh, why? Why though? Here, I'll do one of those metas. I'm being meta right now. I mean, I was just hellbent on showing his chicken butt. I suppose so. Now you'll know that I didn't actually rig a neck. It's just collar. Do you feel the meta yet? Do, do you want to give me like a bajillion likes or whatever? Oh my god, I'm not. Tears are rolling down her eyes. She's a bitch, why are you so mean? <gasps> wow, thanks, Hollow. It shallow did the thing for one beans. It Here's shallowed. my like. She's laughing so hard that she's about to hyperventilate. Stop Mariah from hyperventilating? No. Absolutely not. Yes! The game understands my hatred. One less mouth to feed, right? I love how just um murderous we are after one day with this woman. Cholera? Oh no, get well soon. It must suck having cholera on your birthday. Wait, why do you have cholera? Who has cholera? Wait, I get it. Let them cook. Hi, Bob Pepper! It's pretty personal. Please explain. Uh, he looks incredibly uncomfortable. Let's leave him alone. We found some raspberries and elderberries near the cabin. Elderberries don't taste like much, honestly. I have a tree of them in my front yard. You also find more wild sorrel. Is this going to be enough for a good meal? Everyone is looking for an answer. You decide to do an inventory of all available ingredients. It takes you a while, but you decide on your specialty, cabbage rolls. First, bring a large pot of water to boil. Let the cabbage be boiled for two minutes, draining the water into the sink. Medium mixing bowl, you can like cook rice, onion, egg, salt, and pepper along with tomato sauce. Use your hands to mix thoroughly and decide to wash your hands after it won't come off. Find the rice mixed. Wait, did we not wash our hands before that point? Pretty sure that's gas looking. Why would anyone like gas? I know. Hi, Frank. I'll be looking for a bit. Kind of winding down. Oh, that's good. That's good. Your mother was your a hamster, hamster and your, and your father, father smelled, smelled of elderberries. elderberries. I will thank you. You roll them up and tie a string around them so they stay in one piece. You place the cabbage rolls in a large skillet or medium heat, pour in the rest of the tomato mixture over the top. Covering it, you bring it to a boil. You reduce the heat to low and let the cabbage rolls simmer for 40 minutes. Cabbage rolls. You cook cabbage rolls. Mariah looks optimistic. Karen looks skeptical. Karen is a bitch. Anatoly looks scared. Gregor looks thrilled. You watch intently as everyone takes the first bite. Okay. Mmm, that's pretty darn good! Wow, I can eat the whole batch myself. I think the vegetables too taste better, but I'm loving how tender the cabbage is. The sauce is pretty red. Did you use fresh tomatoes for it? Really adds to it. Spend some of the liquid on top of it. You'll thank me later. Incredible. It's definitely growing on me. Thanks again for cooking. It was really special. Everyone leaves the dishes behind. Hey, 
Hey, I made the food! You fucks do the dishes! Not happening! You settle in and go to bed. Everyone goes to bed full. Tomorrow will be another great day. Will it, though? I fart, I fart in your general, general direction. direction. Good morning, everyone! Oh, Jesus. <laughs> she just like me, for real, for real. Again, Gregor? Can you let us sleep in? Why is there a squirrel on his shoulder? Not today! Why? Storm clouds are gathering outside. We need to find some food before it begins to downpour. Gregor, you're overreacting. We have enough food to last us a while. Enough food? I thought we used most of the supplies for last night's dinner. He's right. The meal you made was delicious, but he used a lot of what we had. Gregor's also correct. Precipitation is unusually high in this area. As many areas are being risk for flooding. You foolish not to go out and look for food today? You really think it'll flood? Thankfully, cabins on high ground. It doesn't mean we're safe from floodwaters. Mariah, best girl. Mariah is best girl. She just said me for real. Day two, dishes still in the sink. It's called art. I cannot believe these motherfuckers didn't do the damn dishes. I made supper. You're losing it, Gregor. Karen, there's nothing to worry about. I think Gregor's right, Karen. Huh? Won't hurt to prepare for the worst. Eh. I think she's right, Karen. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Anatoly, let's go out and prepare for the storm. Foraging should be key priority today. There's plenty of edible foods and has better odds than trying to hunt. Give me a few minutes or a plot of root and some papier. Let me help, little guy. Oh, I have the high ground. Anatoly and Gregor head to the bathroom to consult the map. Mariah and Karen are still hanging around. Unfortunately, in life, you can't make everyone happy. When given a choice to speak to a character, choose wisely. You can only select one of them. Try to max out your bond with certain characters for unique dialogue and scenarios. Which one would you like to talk to? Uh, not Karen. Mariah is paging through some of the books on the bookshelf. You walk over to her. There are some good books here. Which one is your favorite? Uh, crafting. Oh, me too. Metallurgy is so interesting. Curious about what ally composition or cauldron is. I haven't seen one like that before. It leaches the lead directly into all of our food. Anyway, great choice. Wow. My relationship is stronger. I didn't know you were so smart. Are you thinking I'm a fucking dumbass? It's all getting later, okay? You start to blush a little bit. You hear a cheer from the other room. Sounds like the two are wrapping up their meeting. Gregor and Anatoly come back from their meeting. Gregor is blushing slight. They're definitely a thing. Definitely a thing. Hey, can you cook something while we're out? Yes, I will just slave over the fire for you. You nod. Thank you. All right, everyone. We have our route now. Let's beat those rain clouds. Group leaves, determined as ever. You have the cabin all to yourself. Oh, good. What's that noise? Sounds like it's coming from the kitchen. Demons. Radio? What's going on with that radio? What radio? I didn't even notice it on the ground when you walked in. Did somebody leave this radio here? It looks newer than anything you've seen before. Seems to be broken. Better hold on to this. You got the strange radio! For you kid Jenner, what should you check out? The bedroom. I kinda wanna go in the basement, honestly. Basement! Your imagination seems red staring at the basement door. Yeah, it's cursed. Try opening and closing the deadbolt, just in case. Mill around until the others return. What? Nothing? Lame. Rise back early today. Hey. The others are still looking for food outside. And until I found some more berries. Nothing that will feed all of us. Please don't tell the others. But I'm a little worried about our supplies. Crunch the numbers so we don't have enough food. Even with rationing, so if there's a big storm, we get stuck here. Rising system is so disappointed in your inventory management. Okay, try cooking with a little less this evening. Thank you. You've done such a great job with meals so far. You're very sweet. So I'm blushing a little bit. Th drugs. <laughs> Get drugs! I don't understand how, like, you could just eat. Like, you won't die from no food for one day. But okay. Maybe you could teach you to cook sometimes? You nod. Looking forward to it. Hey, could you, you could hold cooking classes here someday when I cook everybody. 
rudely interrupting a tender moment, the others rushed into the cabin. Oh god, no. Not her. Don't be so down, everyone. We got tons of good berries. Ugh. Jam is so bland without any sugar. Oh my god, you're such a complainer pants. Do you have any sugar? Shake your head sadly. Yikes! Turn that friend upside down, Karen. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? I'm not smiling for you, Gregor. Ugh. You missed out. The sunset was really tremendous on our way back. He's orange, red, and even a little purple poking out. Red sky night, sailor's delight. This is gonna be fucking not windy. I think. I think. I think that's what that means. Red sky morning, sailor's take morning. We can expect a sailor's delight tomorrow. That's awesome! You're such an optimist, big guy. We must have walked a few miles today. Gorgeous sights. You can even see snow on the tips of the mountains. That rumble sounded like a dying calf. And a streak of rin tin tin. You look from person to person, trying to determine who it was. It was definitely Mariah. Mariah, recognize this sound from anywhere! Guilty! Mariah looks embarrassed, but the group's left at her honesty. Except for you! You are a curmudgeon! You search your mind for something to say, but all you can think of is an old riddle. Those who have it do not want it. Those who have it least succeed. Those who have it for too long perish. When you feed it, it gets smaller. What am I? Uh... Dust? Try again. Everyone is pondering the answer. Bitch, I don't fucking know. Rice face lights up. I got it. Is it hunger? Correct! Yeah, I was gonna guess that. Karen, fuck off. So, what's on the menu today, Chef? Bread and jam. Crush the berries in your small mortar and pestle, spreading it on some crusty bread. You cooked raspberry jam and bread. The bread's a little tough. I like tough bread! Fuck off! Why are you so complaining? Gregor, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, but this homemade jam is to die for. Sorry. No, you're right. This bread stinks. Fuck off! I can, if you can do better, fucking do it your damn self. Mariah, everybody laughs. You're not sure this could be called a meal, but it got the job done. Everyone thanks you for dinner and heads off to sleep. Bullshit happens. You could have been wishing you had more. You have a strange dream. Something is riding on your back. It's becoming a nuisance. You try to see it in the mirror. It's fucking Karen. <laughs> try almost everything. But it won't get off. The pain between your shoulder blades is getting worse by the minute. You wander away from the cabin, stumbling by a river to soak your pain in the cool water. You didn't want things to come to this, but you've exhausted all of our options. You swim out to the middle. Rocks on the bottom cut your feet. You slip and fall to your knees. You lean back, trying to submerge the thing under the water. But it won't drown. It won't drown. You splash frantically, plunging your head beneath the water. And the current takes you downstream, and you fucking drown and die. It's not yes. You fucking drown. Uh, oh no, you've been living your back, just need to disguise, you sink to the bottom. You should take your last gasp, you see what's on your back staring into your eyes. But you don't even have your air in the lungs to scram. You wake in a cold sweat. <gasps> it was a creature. A jump scare creature. Wake up! Sorry, you're making strange noises in your sleep. Yeah, I was having a nightmare. You have those, you know? What's going on, Gregor? So the lightning wake you up. It woke me up. Tried to fall back to sleep, but it's so loud. Ugh, let's just get back to sleep and talk about this in the morning. Everyone nods in agreement and gets back to bed. Bullshit. Oh. Puppy having dreams. Except for you. You can't fall back asleep. You still have goosebumps from the nightmare. Karen snoring is louder than a sawmill. You find it very loud and very distracting. You don't sleep a wink. Everyone is now up and awake in the cabin. You hear the front door open and quickly slam shut. Anatoly sounds petrified. I looked at the door and we're completely surrounded by floodwaters. Looks like Sailor's Take Warning was more appropriate for today. Maybe it'll clear out tomorrow? You can't steal big guy's optimism, Karen! Why the hell not? That's all he has going for him. Eh! He's also good at chopping wood, though. Haha! -ha. Knock it off, you two. 
Right? Do you think it'll clear out tomorrow? I gave it a 27% chance of clearing up tomorrow. Based on what? I was bored stiff, so I read a book on local precipitation levels for the last 20 years in the living room. Sounds like you're stealing until I thunder. Until you're a book nerd, right? Why don't you read it? Ugh. Couldn't make it past the cover. Is that right? Yes. Can't fuck up! Books have some great stuff on artists and crafting and natural sciences. Why let them sit there gathering dust? How'd you arrive at a 20% chance of it clearing up tomorrow? It's easy! Take the time of year and multiply it by a factor of... Mariah begs, begins to explain meteorology to you. She isn't dumbing any of this down. Oh, God. We're too stupid for this. Similar to... <laughs> so the first thing you need to understand... Minutes of explanation feel like hours. You look over at Anatoly. He's listening intently to Mariah. So intently he hasn't blinked yet. You can see his eyes drying up. A tear rolls down one of his cheeks. This is brutal to watch. Mariah finally wraps up her lecture. She ends with a bow. Nobody claps. Tough crowd. But Mariah, that was awe-inspiring. You all see a few minutes in, but it's okay. I didn't understand a word of it. Same! Karen is being such a damn Karen. Karen truly is. Gah. Until he turns to you. Anyway, there's no telling how long this will last. You can't leave the cabin until these floodwaters stop. I know our food situation's a little tight, but I know you make the right decisions. I believe in you. Karen does not. Karen will be the first to go. Me too! Looks like you have enough leftover berries for more bread and raspberry jam. Pass on the jam. Give me more crusty bread. Everyone laughs. Except for you. We do never laugh. With everyone stranded in the cabin, you need to keep everyone fed and happy. You sneak out to the kitchen while everyone's still talking. <laughs> she tastes like a Karen, too, probably. You get up some crusty bread and get to work making more jam. The kitchen to yourself. You died to check in on one of the chompettes. Hello! Hi. Don't worry, as leader of the Chompettes, I'll make sure none of the humans know about us. Onion. That big guy would eat me like an apple, so definitely don't tell them about us. I used to eat onions like apples. Potato is not okay. <laughs> Are your plans going awry? Fuck off, bread. <laughs> oh my god. Got another cornbread classic for you. Did you hear about the bread maker's bakery burning down? No. Her business is now toast. <laughs> <laughs> That one's been done to death. Do you know how raspberry and milk were introduced? You tell her no. Raspberry! Raspberry milkshake. <laughs> Does cornbread teach you that one? Nope. Wasted an entire day thinking about that terrible pun. Where is cornbread? I think cornbread's fucking dead. These jokes are a bit stale. Oh my god. It was worth the time and effort, raspberry. Potato is not okay. Maybe you won the annual Chompette comedy competition raspberry. this year? Yes. Oh, good lord. I won't choke on stage this year. Isn't that every year, Brad? <laughs> we still talk about that closing line, Brad. You're going to do great this year. Anyway, don't even think of eating us if you're hungry. I want to, though. Chomp it, sit together. They're thick and thin. <laughs> Potato, I swear to God. Repeat the line or we're locking you up again. Life or death. That's right. Chomp it. <laughs> Alright. The child had some of the inch to close the door on themselves. You bring the crusty bread and jam to the living room. Okay. Alright. Karen and Trev shows you're bringing the food. What? What complaint have you brought me now? Take it long enough. You bitch! Karen looks at two slices of bread and left an amazing jar of raspberry jam. There's some mold in these last two slices of bread. That's literally impossible! I made the bread yesterday! It's probably just flour. Fuck off. Karen's right. What the hell is the matter with you? You grip the knife tightly in your hand and fucking stab her. You think this is enough for five of us? Well, you guys can fucking eat it. I guess I'll just fucking starve. Okay? Wait, we can't throw this bread away. That's all we have left. Gregor's right. And tell you, will most sports give us food points? Just fucking get dark. Ah! Uh, no scientists. Sorry. Hmm. Let's pick up as much mold as we can. Can't leave with the flood water, so this will have to last us another day. Everyone grimly nods, ripping apart their pieces like a pack of wolves. 
Gregor seems to unhinge his jaw and eat it in one bite. He looks like a duck eating bread. Thanks again. You're welcome, Mariah. You're fucking welcome. I'm allergic to mold. Oops. Bread and jam is a bunch of meals. More than we had when we left Ukraine. <gasps> Ooh. Plenty of rainwater outside, so at least we won't die of dehydration. Until the storm is over, nobody should leave the cabin. It should clear up if we just give it a chance. And Jolie, wh where are you getting this information from? One of the books in the bookshelf about climate here? You're a little literate. That's well, definitely a lie. Ugh. I've seen him reading. Little guy's been studying. Seriously, he pretends to read those books because he wants us to think he's smart, but I can tell he's just staring at the pa- Bro, Karen! I swear to Christ! What do you think? Angela can read. I saw it with my own two eyes. He must be going blind then. Eh. Thanks. Don't know why Karen makes something up like that about me. You aren't fooling anyone, Anatoly. Karen has stormed off. Thanks for bagging me up. Yeah, bro, I got you. Good to have someone so positive around. Anatoly looks relieved. I think he'll remember that. I guess let's call it a day. Yeah, sure. Everyone shuffles off to their sleeping areas ten minutes later. Hey, Karen likes to find somebody's weakness and use it against them when she's frustrated. She's also just a bitch, so... Yeah. Just wanted to thank you for backing me up earlier. Fam, I got you. You're very sweet to do that. I know. Anatoly looks at you with a look of admiration. Is anyone going to mention the squirrel on your shoulder? Nah. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Nah. <laughs> Anatoly looks like he's blushing as he walks away. You're definitely sure he will remember that. Okay. Get ready for bed and put a blanket on. You would have been very hungry. Squirrel is just emergency rations. Oh! You don't dream the entire night, but you sleep through everyone waking up. Are they going to bitch at me about not having any food? That's how fast a deer could run if startled. Whoa. Incredible. Impressive. Yawn. Wish we had a deer here. With the food getting lower, let's just skip today's meal. Titch. No. It's only for one day. Various cultures and religions have practiced fasting throughout history. That doesn't make us feel any better, Anatoly. What options do we have? Our food rationed. Our food wasn't rationed properly. Uh, you guys aren't fucking helping. All you did was bitch. Until it leaves, mumbling to himself. So passive-aggressive of him. I thought we were friends, you son of a bitch. Everyone goes to a separate area. Karen in the bedroom. Gregor in the living room. Mariah in the kitchen. And Anatoly in the bathroom. Who do you want to speak to? Mariah. Oh! Didn't hear you coming! Yeah. I was just double-checking if there was any food we might have missed. But I couldn't get the drawer open. Could you give it a try? You nod. Great! While you go down that, I'm gonna get some more reading done. Okay. Cool. Later! You give the drawer a hard yank open. Hello! Hello! Hi. Is Thunderstone keeping you up at night? You just need to roll with it. Raspberry whispers so quietly you lean over and listen to her. We need to talk soon. Please listen to me when the time comes. Anyway! Raspberry! Please don't let the others see us! Cabbage! That's right, Raspberry. Part of being a trumpet is secrecy. <laughs> we don't want those humans over here our meetings. You shake your head. Good! Trumpets! <laughs> Roll on out! Everyone looks pretty down this evening. Ch, ch, chicken. Hi, stop! The rain. We wish the rain would just stop. You're all doing great. We must be almost at the end of this nightmare. I'm so hungry. Me too. You are too. You wish everyone a good night and get ready for bed. You go to bed with a growling stomach. Wake up. I said, wake up! Hello? The rainfall is non-stop again. Did you have anything to do with this? 
You don't answer her question. <laughs> Always thinking with your stomach, right? You should reconsider. Might save what little humanity you have left. At least I tried. I wouldn't have a guilty conscience by the end of this. Go back to sleep, monster. Bruh. Wake up, grab brush, go on a little- Put on a little- You easily forgot about Raspberry's conversation. You have a strange dream. The boy is yelling at you in the kitchen. You keep telling him to lie down on the tray. But he keeps shaking his head, calling you names. So you do it. You lie down on the tray and make your body as flat as a board. Show him how it's done. His anger turns to courage. Spoiler. Raspberry is a raspberry. <clears throat> think raspberry might actually be a raspberry. He pushes you into the oven. The stench of burning hair fills your lungs. You seem sneering back at you. You wake in a cold sweat. Sweet. It only took us five days to turn to cannibalism and insanity. Maybe. Everyone seems to be sleeping in later than normal. There's no sense to kept them awake all night. The rain is still pouring outside. You can barely make out the trees in the windows. You hear a stirring of blankets, arms, and legs. Mariah looks petrified. I couldn't sleep. Anatoly has bags under his eyes. The storm is too loud. Karen looks out of it. Kevin was creaking so much last night. Sounded alive. Gregory looks a little gaunt. Got a good look out the window. And couldn't see anything due to the rain. Great observation, Gregor. I was so hungry last night. Kept pacing around my bed. Karen turns to you. When is this going to end? I don't fucking know. Who knows about the weather? I checked outside the door again. Floodwaters keep rising. Unfortunately, we're going to need to stay put unless one of us wants to drown in rainwater. As soon as the weather lets up, we'll be able to scavenge for supplies. How close is the nearest town? I don't know. Didn't you have a map on you? I think I dropped it while we were running after Gregor. I'm sure it'll show up eventually. <laughs> Ryan, I told you, what is the sheet? And they also made false teeth. Are we going to find our way back now? We'll... I have to ride out the storm. Well, down to our last slice of bread. I don't know how much longer we can put off eating. The group stares at you. It will clear up in no time. Maybe you're right. The group looks worried. They all gravitate to an area. I feel like Mariah's going to get killed. She has that face. I don't know, man. Not if I fucking kill Karen first. <laughs> you can tell Gregor is putting on a faked optimism. and Mariah's having trouble. Which one do you want to speak with today? Mariah. Brr. Cold as hell over here. I'm surprised Gregor isn't freezing to death at night. How does he do it? You explain to Mariah how the size of a person in fat content determine how warm they are naturally. Ugh. Wish I was as big as Gregor. But to be honest, I don't need to be that tall to make a difference in the world. Do you know what he wanted to do for a career? Mariah does her best Gregor impression. Split firewood and gaze at the stars. How boring is that? Depends on the person, but pretty boring. You're so funny. Thanks for coming and chatting with me. Mariah blushes a little. You make it easier to pass the time. Thank you. They should put out buckets so they have fresh water at least. Yeah, we could make like water soup. <laughs> Sick frontier psychiatrist reference. Thank you for noticing, Free Note. You're a real one. Do I kill them when my relationship gets high enough? Delicious water soup. Yeah. Call even one together. They all look grim. You could cut the tension in the room with a knife. Everyone is staring at you. They're expecting that last piece of bread for dinner. You bring it out. Everyone cannot take their eyes off it. You instruct everyone to take a pinch, and slowly all five of you tear it apart like a wishbone. Everyone studies their piece of bread carefully, wondering how long it will last. Karen is the first to eat hers. She chews each bite a few hundred times before swallowing. Anatoly chews it cautiously, opening his mouth once he finishes each bite. Mariah nibbles on it silently, eyes wide, moving from person to person. And Gregor... Gregor just pops in his mouth like a cherry. It's gone in an instant. The group thanks you awkwardly. It's not much, but you've run out of options. You wish everyone a good night and get ready for bed. You go to bed starving. Okay.
Hold on. Sorry, I was answering a message. Good morning. Morning. Let me check out the rain has stopped. You can hear it. It's still flooding. What are we gonna do? Humans can live about two to three weeks without food. Water isn't a concern. Rainfall should end in a day or two, right? Actually, precipitation can occur more than 215 days a year here. Would you really think it will rain that long? Yeah, totally. It's been days already. What makes you think it will stop soon? Uh, relax, everyone. Let's see how long we can ride this out. Fingers crossed it's done by tomorrow. Panic is slowly creeping in. Everyone's looking scared. But you need to survive. Karen and Greg are both discuss, begin to discuss next options. Do you want to speak with Mariah in the kitchen? Or Anatoly in the living room? Oh, yeah, this one! Said, think instead about how you've done wrong and how you've doomed everyone. Could you ration the supplies better? You crunched the numbers one more time. You could have reduced the amount of vegetables used in the stew, but it was their first day. You had to impress them. Is there anything you could have done differently? Probably not. Mariah, Anatoly, Gregor, Karen. You wonder if they're upset with you? Gregor calls the group over for a meeting. I know the obvious choice is to eat Karen first, but I choose Gregor. He's far too happy and innocent to have experienced cannibalism firsthand. Also, he's the biggest. Okay, logically, yes. Gregor calls. Oh, sorry. I don't think any of us can take this much longer. Gregor's voice starts to crack. I don't want to ask this, but it's time. One of us needs to go outside and search for food. He's crying. Stop crying. Everyone is silent. I'll go. I used to swim all the time near my house, so I probably have the best chance of swimming through the floodwaters. No! Let me go instead. You won't get very far if anything happens to your glasses. Fucking nerd. You're blind as the mole, I remember? That's true, but little guy, let me go. Gregor, I. Sounds good to me. Karen. What the fuck, Karen? Storms are definitely the longest, so he'll probably be best at climbing trees out of all of us. No, that wouldn't be right, Gregor. Let me go instead. I get that these options are good ones, but we need to find food or help. Gregor adds a branch from the woodpile. He cuts into different measurements. Since we can't come to a consensus, let's draw for it. We'll each pick one from my hand. The shortest will go outside to search for food. You're not worried about drawing. So Gregor cut the grid. Oh my god, you said Gregor cut the branch lengths, so you can tell which the biggest one of the bunch. You pick it. Oh my god, we're an asshole! You watch the others intently. Will it be Gregor? Anatoly? Karen? Will it be... Mm -hmm. Looks like I've got the shortest. Mariah! Mariah! It's okay. The drama! I watched an Anatoly forage earlier, so I'll know what to look out for. Just swim until you find higher ground, then scout the area. Take off your clothes. You yeah, find a fish out there! Everyone looks heartbroken. Karen, Anatoly, Gregor, and me. I'll keep us alive. I promise. She promised. Everyone watches as Mariah leaves the cabin. The silence is deafening. Goodbye! Mariah, no! The door shuts behind her. You can faintly hear her yell about how cold the water is. And then silence. Mariah has left the cabin. Hold on. Eh. Let's throw us there again! The rest of the group nods. Everyone stays up, waiting and waiting. The sun is completely set. One by one, each person quietly shuffles off to bed. She's fucking dead. You get ready for bed and easily pass out. The, <laughs> the achievement is called Dead to Me. You have a strange dream. The two women in front of you could be twins. One of them you recognize, the other is a guest. You also guess to sit on a shovel. And then you try to push it into the oven. Her legs are so strong you can't get her into the oven. You curse at her repeatedly. Like this, you hiss. You stretch out your legs until your toes are almost sticking in the coals. You feel four hands on your shoulders and both of them push you in. The familiar smell of smoke and burning hair causes you to throw up on the embers. You can't let it in like this. You're at the metal door off the oven, tearing through the wood logs of the cabin. Screaming, you chase two girls through the woods. Your burns chill with the wind. The guests look behind her and her eyes widen when she sees you. She's terrified. Your furry rips trees up by their roots, soil from the ground, rocks from their pits. 
Rock pits. What's what is that achievement? Right? You've never been this angry in your entire life. Their stamina can't last forever. You're gaining on them as you trample through the field of wheat. The guest throws a piece of cloth behind her. You catch the glint of it in the sun. Golden. As if by magic, the earth splits in front of you, creating a chasm of fire below. You fall into the pit, screaming as your eyes begin to sizzle in the heat and you're in hell or whatever. Hellfire fills your lungs and you're unable to scream anymore. You wake in the cold sweat. Sweet. Nice. 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 Good morning. Do you think she made it to higher ground? No, she's fucking dead. I believe in Raya. Me too. She'll be fine. Right, little guy? So what do we do now? Just wait? Karen? How long? It's been almost a day since she left. And Chilly and Gregor look nervous. Someone needs to go look for her. We need to wait, Karen. Wait for what? The nearest town is miles and miles away. Waiting is all we can do for now. So it could be days before she gets back? Alright, you get your ass out there. You go find her then. Fuck off. What are we supposed to do? To eat mice? Yes. Karen, I'm sure Anatoly will agree, but we'll discuss next option when we get to it. Every waking thought is about food now. I never should have eaten that much. I'm... I'm... Karen's hand are involuntarily shaking. Gregor and Anatoly just nod in agreement. They don't even need her to elaborate. Shimurai will make it back. She promised everyone would reach to their areas. What do you want to do today? Honestly, uh... I want to talk to the food people. Hey! Kitchen definitely doesn't feel the same without Mariah. Her laugh, her smile, her boobs, her little face. I never get to tell her how I felt about her- Oh my god, shut up. She'll be back, right? Oh, sorry, wrong voice. Yeah, I wish we had rationed better. You decided to distract Anatoly from his misery with an old story. There was once a villager who had stocked up on supplies for the winter. He filled his house with a cow and a sack of grains from the field. And... 92 buckets of water, mostly for the cow. He quickly ran out of the room as the house wasn't very big. One day the villager grew sick. He knew he needed the life-giving milk from the cow to survive the winter. When he attempted to milk the cow, his grip was too weak to grasp her udders. Desperation, he begins to boil the grains using his buckets of water. The cow cried out for food, but the villager could only afford to feed himself. Each night, the cries of the cows kept him awake. Till one day, he finally ran out of food. The village crawled into bed, crying as the snow deepened outside. The cow's sad eyes stared at him. He wanted to comfort the cow, but he couldn't step over the buckets. He was too weak, too sick. Last thing he heard was the cow still crying out for food. One haunting noise to end his life. What the fuck story is that? And Anatoly totally looks horrified with your story. I mean, same? You leave him alone in the kitchen. I think we're fucked up! Can't stop thinking about that vegetable stew. I'll be fine with the bread and jam! I'll be fine with just the strawberries. <laughs> Nobody else laughs. I would kill for some vegetables right about now. You would too. I'm gonna try and get some sleep. Good night. Night. I think we need to be the one to be eaten, kinda. You fall asleep quickly, but you only dream about desecrating a corpse. Yeah, we're not okay. You wake in a cold sweat and in a completely different room. Good morning! Karen's looking worse. Will you cook for the group today? Cook. You take a cutlet of meat and begin to cook it in the oven. You cooked meat. Where did you get that? You ignore Karen's question. What's that smell? Gregor finally gets off the couch. Where did you... Three are looking at you, salivating. You take the charred meat out of the oven, cutting it into small cutlets. They immediately grab some off the plate, stewing ferociously. You take a piece and immediately devour it. Do you have any more of this? Explain how meat is stored securely hidden so you can ration better this time. I understand. Thank you. Anatoly runs to the bathroom, puking in the toilet. You can hear him sobbing for a few minutes. Tasters. 
Gregor wanders off. You can tell he returns looking choked up. Oh, it's too weak. Left to sell the meat! Don't fight this, Anatole! <laughs> Anatole takes a cutlet from the plate, turning his back to the group as he devours it. You can hear him crying. Finally, my focus is coming back. Gonna read some of those books! Keep them occupied, okay? Karen leaves you with the men. Who do you want to talk to? Here? Holy shit! <laughs> Wait! Uh, where did we get the meat from, though? <laughs> hey! Thanks for cooking the meat earlier. I was nearly passing out from the hunger pains. Even if I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy, I appreciate the vegetarian dishes you made earlier. You really respected Mariah's boundaries. Thank you. Gregor is more dense than you give him credit for. Heh. <laughs> There's extra slimy, some extra meat. Okay? I don't think Mariah ever left the cabin, guys. <laughs> yeah. Going to see how Anatoly is doing later. The bedroom all to yourself. Where do you want to check first? Under the floor. You notice a bone sticking out. Is it a human bone? Nope, chicken bone. Gross. You look under both of the beds. Just some dust and hair. Gross. Boy, baby, baby. Hi, Onion. Don't be a crybaby, it's just me. Onion, boy, boy. Just playing with some of the toys in this drawer. Onion, onion. Far too old to be playing with any of them. Oh, God. They just called you and chicken bones gross. Shh. You're never too old for toys. Anyway, I need to attend Chico's Tom Pet meeting. <laughs> Smell you later. Onion bounces out of the bedroom. The drawer has various children's toys in it. What's this? June 26, 1862. Yeah. Another body of a child's been discovered with the city of Zakopane. The remains stuffed into a barrel full of potatoes. The cause of death was identical to earlier victims. The significant blood loss due to multiple stab wounds to the stomach. <laughs> this marks the fourth victim of the butcher of Zakopane in less than a month. Take the bloody newspaper with you. Onion! Onion! Hours pass. The meal gave everyone the perseverance to keep going. Eating will just make them... Hungrier. Fine now, but soon they'll be begging for more. We've waited long enough. What's for dinner? Colonel explained that you want to ration the meat better this time, and there will be no dinner. Fine. I understand. I guess I'd rather eat tomorrow than more today. No argument's perfect. Everyone decides to call it an early night. You fall asleep instantly tonight. You have a strange dream. You're having dinner with a blacksmith? But he's not touching his food. The only light in the room comes from the oven. He clears his throat, sticking, stroking his beard. <laughs> I can forge anything, he says. Your eye has been giving you issues lately, so you reply, Forge me a new eye, then. You laugh. Then the ropes come out. He ties you to the chair with a long rope to prevent you from struggling. You rip the rope apart without even trying, so the blacksmith uses a thicker rope. No turning back now. He takes a hot poker out of the coals. Holding it in front of his face, you can see his beard and eyes watching you. His beard's also watching you. He slowly brings back the poker, ca aiming carefully for your eye, before plunging it through your skull with a sickening clunch. Force of the blow throws you backwards a few feet. You're unable to break the ropes. You vomit all over your chest, and your sweater, and your spaghetti. As the smell of your decimated eye floods your nostrils, the blacksmith stands over you, spitting on your body. You wake in a cold sweat. I'm sure this is fine. Nice. You wake up to see Gregor looking out the window. He turns to you, not smiling. <gasps> Take a look out the window. Do you notice anything? The floodwaters have receded a little bit, but everyone is still bound to the cabin. The tray used to be completely visible. It's gone now. See, so you should have eaten him first. No, it's fine. Good morning, big guy. Mariah make it back? I'm pretty sure we ate her, my guy. This might sound a little crazy, but every night around 2 a.m. I can hear her outside. She makes this awful gurgling noise like she's trying to get water out of her lungs. Have you heard her, Gregor? 
Sometimes when the rain gets faint, I think I can hear her whispering. I haven't heard anything like that! When she's whispering, it's like she's trying to tell you something. Right? Yes. Uh... I got jump scared a little bit. 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 Can somebody come like, can somebody come give me a hug? <laughs> Stop! I sometimes hear her crying through the radio, but that's just a broadcast, right? I think we should have another piece of meat for breakfast. Chat, hold One my step hand. closer to Mariah. So what she would have wanted. What's gotten into you, Anna? Aunt Holly's eyes look at you, begging. Bring us another slab. Please. He clearly doesn't have the stomach for it. Can't get the taste out of my mouth. Please help me. Chat, hold my hand. Anatoly. Gregory looks pained at Anatoly's words. I think he's right. Let's bring up some of that meat. Grab some of the meat from your secret hiding place. You put it into squares, adding it to boiling cauldron water. It'll taste bland without any seasoning, but you need to serve it up right away. Mmm. What's taking so long? Boil it faster. Looks almost done. Patience. It's finally finished. You serve the meat in bowls. No hand holding before marriage, but do it though. Frex, when are you gonna give your models these very expressive faces? Well, I can do this! <laughs> Gregor drinks the broth first before swallowing the trunks whole, like a duck does when eating bread. Until he creates ripples in the broth using his food, he isn't eating. Uh, sorry about earlier, everyone. I, I don't know what overtook me. <laughs> Anatoly begins to weep. You look over at Karen. You didn't notice her even start to eat. It's just an empty bowl now. Good enough clothes. Karen is staring right at you. How much more meat is left? Swain, most of it has gone bad. This is the last of it. Ugh. How could you be so careless again? You remember Karen's knife. You need to think fast. What the hell are we supposed to do now? Wait around again? The storm isn't ending. You clear your throat. Anatoly? Yeah. I think tomorrow you should look for Mariah. Or forage for plants outside. I, I think you should go tomorrow, little guy. Nobody else can identify edible plants like you. <laughs> Please, Anatoly. You can swim back after a few hours. Kirk is right, Anatoly. May you find Mariah out there. Think Mariah's fine by herself? He still hasn't accepted what happened yet. She doesn't need anyone's help. But we need your help, Anatoly. That's right, Anatoly. Please help us. Let me sleep on it. Okay. No problem, little guy. Hmm. We are terrible. We are so terrible. Everyone shuffles off to their rooms, reading books and knitting to pass the time. You go to bed ravenous. I wish I spoke this language so it would be extra creepy, but I mean, it doesn't need to be extra creepy for this to be creepy. Mariah, something is approaching. Onion! God damn it, Onion, fuck off! What? What do you want? Onion. Not going to be very sweet today. I'm worried about Anatoly. He's going to cave to peer pressure! Yay! Can you stop him from leaving the cabin? You don't answer, Onion. Please? Don't you trust me? You shake your head. Um, got a fun factoid for you. Do you know that leaving out an unpeeled onion in your room absorbs bacteria? 
to help prevent colds and ward off viruses. Onion. That was a lie! Fun fact out of that myth, people actually believed it in the 1500s. How embarrassing. Who would believe that? <laughs> there even was a doctor in 1919 who got a surge of people believing it. <laughs> anyway, you know what smells like a raw onion left in a room? You! It's been a while since your last bath, right? You can't remember. I could smell you before I even came into this room. Yeah, we're stinky. I missed a bit. Were these things explained? No. They're just there. We are insane. Onion! Yikes! So, can you stop Anatoly from leaving? I know he has cabin fever, but this is ridiculous. It'll be impossible to stop a grown man from leaving. Onion! Please. We don't need another one stalking the hallways. Tapping on the windows. Crying through the radio. You have the sudden urge to scream. Why don't you th why do you think I've been using the mouse holes to get her around? Onion. Scared to death that I'll run into her. Don't make me tattle the cabbage about you. She can be as mean as potato if you get on her bad side. Onion, onion. Just kidding, she's great. Anyway, when the time comes, just tell until you care about him and don't want him to leave. Even if it's for me, okay? You can trust me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to work on some new ice skates. They made of butter slices, so I get to slate around the frying pan tomorrow. Onion! Bye. You might finally manage to forget everything that happened. I fell asleep again, still ravenous. You have a strange dream. Fox is collecting payment in your living room. You despise him, so you put two dogs at the bottom of a sack and then add six chickens on top. Okay. Fox smiles at you and leaves. At some point in his journey, Fox will eventually open the sack, and the dogs tear the fox in half. Bill was such loathing for the fox, you gave him the only things you had for food. All of those chickens. As the snow piles up outside, you begin to eat whatever you can find. Pillowcases, candles, leather. One day you wake up and you have nothing left to eat. Absolutely nothing. Just an insatiable hunger. A few days later you go mad and leave the cabin completely ravenous. A nearby tree looks like charred meat. Your iron teeth cut through the tree bark, tearing your gums apart by the splinters. Your mouth fills quickly with blood. Days later a deer gallops by. First creature in the woods to see your corpse. You wake in a cold sweat. Something smells terrible in the living room. Someone puked in the corner. You wipe it up with a rag to save them the embarrassment. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, little guy. Well, Anatoly, what's your decision? I barely slept last night. Her whispers came through one of the holes in the floor. She kept telling me to come outside. Hmm. We don't want to rush you. One of us puked last night. So that's what that smell was. It's holy. My patience is wearing thin. You have one hour to make a decision. Uh, you go outside. Why? Why so quickly? Hmm. Because I'm not waiting any longer. You can see the glint of Karen's knife under her dress. Best to watch out for that knife. I always knew you were insane. The group disperses. Tensions seem to be rising. You have one hour to kill. What do you want to do? Hi. Anatoly looks pale. Thanks for coming over. Anatoly seems comforted by your presence. I don't like what the music just did. Gregor told me he's heard Mariah. I'm sure Karen isn't being honest with me. Have you checked out the basement door closely? Every so often, I can see her peeking at me through the holes. Really don't want to drown outside. But at least I won't have to have, have her tormenting me anymore. You know it's in the basement, don't you? No. Wow. You aren't kidding anyone. You're just lying to yourself. Please get away from me. <laughs> Why? Bruh, I thought we were friends. 
call everyone together for a meeting. Antoli, you okay, little guy? Antoli looks pale, like he's going to pass out. Hey, Antoli, have you made a decision? Yes. I'll help you all out. I promise. Thank you, Antoli. Big tears roll down Gregor's cheeks. I'll miss you, big guy. I'll miss you, little guy. Hmm. Thank you, Antoli. No, this wasn't easy, but it's for the best. Well, goodbye. Have fun being dead and food. Karen. Yes? Hi. Gregor looks at you expectantly. Do you want to say anything to Anatoly? You say nothing. Bye! I, uh... Goodbye, Anatoly! Goodbye, everyone. Good luck, little guy. Anatoly has left the cabin. Well... See you soon, little guy. Hmm. I guess all I can do now is wait. Good night! Karen goes to the bedroom to sleep. I... I didn't tell him the truth. Gregor's getting choked up. I didn't tell him. Missing him already. Gregor curls up on the couch for the night, turning his back to you. You shut your eyes, quickly falling asleep. You hear a scraping from the floor. God damn it, bread! Fuck you! Oh my god! <laughs> Explain how this isn't a good time right now. This is no laughing matter. I'm worried about Gregor. He's as tall as a tree, but dumb as a brick. <laughs> What's the root of that? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Another cornbread classic. You're being very unpopular right now. That's a tree reference. Get it? <laughs> anyway, you need to protect Gregor from the red-haired woman. Cabbage called an emergency combat meeting and told me to give you this mission. Watch out for that knife. Protect Gregor. Okay. <laughs> it's the least you can do, right? You tell Bread that pun didn't make sense. On a roll today, I'll see you around. Bread hops away, squeezing himself through the mouse hole with a small pop. Fall asleep, thinking about what Bread told you. Okay! Okay! It's on! You have a strange dream. It's lying on the table in front of you. Take off the glasses first, partially cracked, and set them down next to the workbench. Working on the saw, you wrap the cuts in an old newspaper. Some of it gets soggy immediately, so you begin to run the cuts with towel before wrapping. Much better. You hear something approaching, so you clench your fist, getting ready to strike whatever's coming for you. You wake in a cold sweat. We we def we we definitely we definitely eating our friends. In violent bounce of narcolepsy. You wake in a completely different place. Did you sleepwalk or... You found some meat. Everybody's still asleep? This would be a nice surprise after yesterday's events. Decide to cook breakfast for everyone. Cutting each slice fairly thin. You brown each side in the oven. The smell is unique. Karen runs into the kitchen. What is that smell? Give it to me! No! You don't argue. Karen grabs a cutlet, burning her hands before bringing it to her mouth. Ah! She hungrily devours it, barely chewing. She grabs another cutlet off the plate and eats it. He thought she was concerned with rationing. Gregory wakes up on the couch and heads into the kitchen. Oh, God. Already. Gregory looks conflicted. Lisa comes to the hunger. They always do. Gregory eats his food in a few bites, carefully grabbing a second cutlet. The tears start streaming down his face, but he doesn't make a sound. You join them in the meal, quickly consuming the meat on the table. I can think straight again. We'll be out of here in no time. No need to ration anything now. Karen is sounding more determined than before. Uh, I'm going to lay down on the couch, trying to keep this food down. Greg crawls on the couch, turning his back to you. Karen leans in to whisper. I'm glad... Mariah and Anatoly are gone. They were stopping us from bonding properly. How'd you get so good at it? You tell Karen. After one bite, it just made me feel whole again. Even with the nightmares, it's worth it. It took a few nights, but I fought back. Now it's all I can think about. I read a book on necropsy. Text is ancient, but diagrams are beautifully drawn. Very descriptive. How many years did it take you to perfect the craft? You tell her. You're right! 
You used to tell Mariah that you weren't funny, but that's not true. Sorry about that. You've grown on me. Karen pauses deep in thought. You know Gregor can't swim, right? He'll be the next to leave, but he doesn't stand a chance outside. They always seem to come back, right? One way or another. Why wait for him to come back? Karen hands you a vial of liquid. I think you know what needs to be done. This is a strong anesthetic. Don't ask me how I found it. I want you to slip this into Gringer's bug tonight. I'm going to do this to you. Hi, Manuel. This is for the best. He won't feel any pain until he wakes up. All you have to do is stand back and let me work on him. This, of course, is beyond extreme. Will you do this for me? Nope. T Fine. Save that for a rainy day. I have everything set up by the couch. You don't have to watch. The restraint should easily be easy to apply myself. Gregor's strength is a farce. Gregor, hi. Hey, Karen. What are you doing? Untie me. Oh, my God. This will be over soon, Gregor. Ah. Well, I did a shit job of protecting Gregor. Uh, Oops. I hate when that happens. Ugh. Gregor has turned silent. Rip Gregor, yeah. You leave her alone, going into the bedroom and crawling into bed, and Anatoly slept in. He fell asleep almost instantly. Well, it's just me and the fucking alpha bitch here. This is not cooking, mama! Wake up, sleepyhead. Ah! You were having a nightmare. Oh, good. There's somebody behind her. Thanks for letting me practice last night. I think I did a great job. Made us all some breakfast this morning to celebrate. Breakfast with what? That's a surprise! Gregor already finished his... Took a few hours, but he caved. Come, let me show you! Yeah, I bet it head to the living room. It's cooking mama, as in mama is the one we are cooking. Yeah. Also, why? Why? He's a little weak from the blood loss, don't worry! Bandage him up like a field medic! Why? What is it, Gregor? Where am I? God, you're stupid! Maybe you spent time reading books with chopping wood? You would have noticed the pages I bookmark in the necropsy book! What are you talking about? Do I have to spell it out for you? You can't swim! How are you supposed to help us out when you'd immediately drown? You sink like a log! Some of your limbs away for safekeeping. That leg was pretty tasty, huh? Gregor goes pale. How's that for a big breakfast? <laughs> and don't try to crawl away. If you leave this couch, I'll end you. <laughs> I don't want any of it to go bad, so I'll have to eat that fresh arm when everything else is gone. God damn it! Speaking of which, gonna start cooking another jug. I'll leave it too long to chat! This has gone too f <laughs> too far. Hey. All I wanted to do was keep everyone alive together. But I failed at that. Are you... Are you disappointed in me? I mean, no, bro. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Growing up, nobody had to tell me to be big and strong. It just happened naturally. Mother always made sure I never went hungry. Seconds, thirds, fourths. And yet I complained my belly was not full. One day on my way home from school, I walked. I was walking by the town inn and smelled something amazing coming right out of the pile of trash. I dug through and discovered a bag. They threw away a meal that was fresh out of the oven for some reason. At least that's what I thought. I came ill with food poisoning. I hugged the toilet and cried for hours. My mother rubbed my back and eventually carried me to bed. I learned nothing from that experience. Like everywhere else, I was just here for the food. I'll never get this foul taste out of my mouth. She's gonna keep eating me. I'm sorry. Getting too lightheaded to hold a good conversation. She's gonna torture me again. You know that, right? Yep. Girl's Gregor goes a little more pale. Can you cover me with a blanket? I've never been this cold. This cabinet chills me to the bones. Or what's left of them. 
please consider it my dying wish. Yep. Thank you. They're eating her and then they're gonna eat me! Oh my god! Much warmer now. Watch out for that knife, okay? Gregor begins to look at peace. Uh, oh no! <laughs> the meat's gonna go to waste, man. You watch the last of Gregor's air escape his lungs. Shit! Bitch, she's decomposing! What the hell do you think you're doing? You're talking that Gregor gave up. I've gonna kept him alive for another week! What's wrong with you? What the fuck? It's not my fault, you dumb bitch! T no matter. Plenty of food left now. Karen leaves you alone. You head to the kitchen to try to find the other remains. <laughs> left. Gregor. You look at the pile of dishes and your mind starts to wander. Hello. Let's play hide and seek! Hi, Cabbage. There's five of us to find. Can you find all of us? The red-haired woman should know where the basement key is. I bet one of us is hiding down there. She's whittling something in the rocking chair right now, so watch out for that knife! Probably best to avoid the knife. Wait. I... Isn't that your knife? Why did you let her have it? You shrug. I, uh... As leader of the Chompettes, it's important you find all of us. So please don't forget any of us. Yeah. Good luck! Cabbage rolls away and tries to hide. Why would Cabbage want to play hide and seek right now? You've been neglecting the Chompettes lately. Can't have to play along with them, right? You go to talk to Karen in the living room. No cannibalism here! Hi, Aiko! <laughs> Looks like Karen's slicing away at a block of wood. Karen's remains have been stored for safekeeping! Scrubbed all the blood out of the couch to save you the trouble! Can I help you? Have you seen the basement key? Wasn't it in the kitchen? You can't remember. I haven't seen the key. Maybe one of the chompettes can help you find it in the kitchen? You decide to go and look for it. We're gonna fucking die. I don't think this is wholesome. Yeah. Cannibalism? We're getting those a bajillion calories, or at least portioning it. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, there's not too many places for cabbage to hide. Where do you want to check first? Here's some rustling around in the cold. Room. She always picks the same hiding spot. Oh, you found me. Well done. See the trumpets getting through the mouse hole is a chore. Can't find any trumpets to push me, though. Through. So I guess you'll have to help me out of it. Four trumpets to go. What's next, cabbage? Glad you asked. Keep it up. You'll be a member with trumpets in no time. You asked cabbage about the basement key. <laughs> Did you forget again? It's right in the nasty oven. There's nothing but a big pile of ashes in the oven. You found the basement key! Yeah! There it is! That's the room we found potato. Check beneath the cauldron for the other one. You got the basement entrance key. Let's go find Onion. He's hiding in the bedroom. She's making hide and seek far too easy. Chocolates! Oh, find <laughs> Onion! Cabbage rolls down the hallway. Can't hurt to find Onion, right? It's fucking ro the fucking royalty for yay? <laughs> I haven't known this couch for long, but I will protect it with my life until I get hungry. Yes. Found him! Don't be a crybaby, it's just me. Today, I'm sweet as a sugar cane. Honest. Wow, your breath stinks. Turns head to toe in sweat, too. Could smell you coming a mile away. Gross. Were you scared of the red-haired woman or something? You tell Onion the truth. Whoa. Sounds like I missed some messed up stuff. You had a pass. Sorry to hear Mariah, Anatoly, and Gregor. But yikes. That's three people gone in less than a month. Not as bad as five people in one night, though, right? I would probably lose my lunch if I had to see that again. Anyway, didn't mean to be rude. I got your back. Hello. Glad to have you join us, honey. No problem. There's nothing else to do today. That's not true. I heard bread making noise in the living room. You know how loud it can get. Cabbage. Bread? The one and only. Chompettes. Uh, Let's move out. Your party is quickly expanding. Three chompettes left. You're getting a terrible headache. And your face is feeling numb. And your legs aren't moving. Oh well. You do some timed breathing exercises for a few minutes. That seemed to help! You suddenly feel a second wind coming on. Time to get that bread. You proudly strut up the living room, happy to be alive. Hmm, <laughs> bread. You hear bread coming out of the mouse hole. He's taking a sweet time. 
Found me. Everyone secretly, secretly favorite jump at bread. Don't you loathe me? My cousin Cordburn taught me that one. He has hundreds, no thousands of terrible puns. He's my role model. So what do you need? <laughs> you tell Brad about gathering the chompettes together. That's a pretty crummy idea. Remember what happened last time? With Potato? I mean, we all chose to be in that drawer, but this? You're going against the whole grain here. Do you really think we want to go back downstairs? Hmm. Brad, we need your help finding Potato. Mr. Big Guy, come help! I would never let the chompettes down. I need to pass my culinary quiz. I'm coming with you. I have no idea what's going on. I've never played this game before today. <laughs> That's great, Bread. Glad to have you on board, Bread. Of course. Wait. Are you drooling? All three chumpets are staring at you. Are you thinking of eating us? You accidentally lick your lips. Snap out of it, girl bridge. <laughs> You already ate. We're no good for that. You glutton. Did they pass out? Holy cow, get them up. So heavy. Pretty self-explanatory. You're helping all the chumpettes find each other. I mean, yeah. You stumble to your feet. Let's uh, go find Raspberry and never speak of this again. Boy, boy. I think you're over over by the basement door. Perfect! Chompettes! <laughs> mosey out! We're moseying. You have three chompettes in your party. Two more to go. Your head feels like it's going to crack open. Your hands have gone completely numb. This one is lasting longer than the others. You focus on wiggling your toes for a minute. You didn't pass out cold on the floor! Two more to go. You go check out the basement door. What in the world is happening here? Moselle! We ate two of our friends, and then pieces of our other friend is weird. I'm so curious on the basement. Me too. Where is she? You feel a chill run up your spine. Goosebumps are all over your body. She's here. The birds outside turn silent. You can hear a pin drop. You can almost hear her breathing. You feel the sudden urge to scream. You can't sneak up on me. Don't ever try that again. Hi, hi, Surprise! Hi, found you, Raspberry! Hi, oh wow, it's very nice to see you, Kevin! We wouldn't leave you behind, Raspberry. Boy, boy. Honest, we need your help finding Potato. Hi, hi, Our combined chompette detective skills say he's in the basement. Oh yeah? Let's find Potato and get out of here. One more to go. Don't worry, the basement is already unlocked. Oh crap, the wind-haired woman is coming over here. Chompettes! Let's hide out! All four chumpheads quickly escape. You pretend to be studying the basement door. You care and creeping up behind you. Found you! You can see the knife out of the corner of Karen's dress. I don't know if I can wait any longer! Show me where you keep hiding the meat. Let's tear them apart piece by piece. Just like Gregor! Karen looks like she's ready to bury the knife into you. What do you do? Uh, hmm. Chompets! Talking food? What the hell are you talking about? And there. You've lost it. You tell her about the cabbage being leader of the Chompets. She's the leader of talking cabbage? What? Karen looks extremely upset. You tell her about raspberry, onion, and bread. They asked you to save them? What the hell does that mean? You tell her about potato. And there's a potato. That's dangerous. A potato is killing people! You unlock the basement door! You've lost it, but thank you. I'll bring up some cutlets and we'll have a great dinner. Okay? See you soon! Karen descends the staircase into darkness. You locked the basement door! Did you... Did you just lock the door? You block out the screams of rage and bargaining. Given enough time, it will end. You crawl into bed and go to sleep.
You slept in today. Pounding has completely stopped. You really need to go to the bathroom. You decide to open your eyes. The door does not look sturdy. You must have sleepwalked to the bathroom last night. The glow of the candle is oddly comforting. The candle blew out. And the door is locked. You find a flashlight in the corner of the bathroom and turn it on. You're in the dark, but you're not alone. Click on objects around the bathroom to get more information or find hidden clues. If you're stuck, just wait a little bit. See the glint of objects when spent around the bathroom. Just move around your cursor to search the room. I hate this. I hate Cabbage. it. Hi. Hello. Hi. Are you locked in the bathroom again? You tell about the candle being blown out. Maybe you just need to try wiggling it a little bit. Sometimes the simplest method is the best one. Now, if you'll excuse me, need to conduct the next secret chomp at meeting. <laughs> My god, hi! Well, getting locked in the bathroom is enough excitement for one day. You get under the covers and quickly fall asleep. Like us, leave your head. Karen? Just your imagination again. Karen can still be alive, right? Somebody's at the door. <gasps> you grip the door now tightly, getting ready for what's next. Oh no. Hey, dude. That can't be the real Gregor. Yeah, he's got all of his limbs. That's fucked up. Determine the haunt. Has officially begun. Some spirits move on immediately, others linger, and some, some stop at nothing to give you a heart attack, or get you to fall down a flight of stairs, or cause you to wander into an early demise. No way of knowing which one the group will choose. The rain has stopped outside, you decide to go look out the window. Go back at the couch, Riker! Flood wires are completely gone. Karen would appreciate the good news, but not after locking her in the basement. No good reason to leave the cabinet. Cabin. Plenty of food here now. You've been so busy you've forgotten to eat. Head to the kitchen for a snack. Karen's hiding spot was too obvious. Take a few bites of meat. You lost more of his humidity. Not fresh enough. Oh well. You decide to crawl back into bed and get a little extra sleep. I saw something behind one of the trees. Me too, and it went away. Oh, good. You have a strange dream. The clouds have parted. The rain has gone away. You wake in a cold sweat. Okay. Is this another trick, or...? Good morning? She's still sticking around. You head to the kitchen to get breakfast. Your food is gone. That noise is coming from the living room. Anatoly? <laughs> Nobody's here. Some deep scratches are dug into the wood by the couch. Something is approaching. Uh, it's making that noise. Oh, you know. Suddenly it was coming from the basement door. You go over to investigate. Cold wind is blowing through the hole in the door. Yeah, we might want to, like, you know, fix the door. Door's looking kind of fucky. Is it a chompette? Yeah, it's probably just a chompette. They're good little guys. You get goosebumps all over your arms. Is this a... Oh, that's cool. You wake in a, you wake in a cold sweat. It's just potato. Yeah, potatoes down there. We haven't seen potatoes in ages. Hi, CN. Uh, so we went on this trip, I guess, with these people who were our friends or something. And then we got stuck in a cabin and then we, uh, we ate them. All of them. We ate all of them. That was just a dream? Oh, yeah, it was. It's raining again. They're taunting you with dreams of a sunny day. You get out of bed and head to the living room. Head to living room. There should be a the in there. There isn't. Also... 
You can still smell Gregor here. Oh yeah, we chopped off his arm and all that. Well, it wasn't us. We didn't do that. Um, also, there's like talking vegetables. Did they taste good? I doubt it. Hi, Soren! Sniffer, sniffer. Should you have intervened with Karen? Probably wouldn't have changed the outcome. It also might have led to your death. Everything seems to be going so well. Perfectly normal gaming experience. Yeah! And bread. The couch is so comfortable. Even after Gregor imprinted on it. Decide to take a nap, which quickly turns into sleep. I must have woken up too early today. The cabin living room is pitch black. Pick up a flashlight nearby to explore the darkness. Oh, good. Anatoly? Yeah. Help. <laughs> First note you ever received. Thinking about the messenger. What's a smile on your face? Wait, there was a glowy. I can't find it. Hmm? Notice the note sticking out from one of the books. Now, I know you've been ignoring my other letters, so I'm begging you. Please put my daughter back. Bring my daughter back safely or I'll need to get others involved. I've left payments outside the door and we'll pay any price. Please let her go. We don't want to, we don't have to involve anyone else. You take the mother note with you. Decide to lay it back down on the couch and get the rest of your sleep. A little peek. Yeah, he's just peeking. He's just like, hey, what are you doing in there? And I'm like, I'm snoozing. How are you? He slept, slept walked again. You can hear Potato mumbling in the drawer. Hey dude. Oh, it's you again. Tell me. In the first week with the red-haired woman and the others, where did you sleep? You think for a minute, but come up with nothing. It's worse than I imagined. If I can be honest, it was truly horrific to witness. Still nothing. You would routinely collapse in the middle of the hallway. Sleep on into walls or worse, going down to the basement. Can't believe you haven't broken your neck on the stairs yet. You seem to survive almost anything. Do I have that right? Must be that addiction to meat. <laughs> or something else. Well, would you share that secret with me? Okay. You tell Potato the secret. Wow. Didn't think you'd be foolish enough to tell me. I'm living longer than expected already, but this is good information to take with me. Thank you. Was that the right thing to tell Potato? <laughs> it's a delight to watch you fall apart. What does a red-haired woman have in store for you? You haven't thought about Karen in a while, but how many days has she been down there? You do realize she's probably been feasting on the three. She'll be much stronger than the last time you saw her. <laughs> Go downstairs, put an end to this. Not for the chompettes, just for me. You head for the basement door. What the fuck? Quickly do the math in your head and determine Karen will be dead in the basement. It's been enough days, right? You open the door and prepare for the worst. Just a staircase. Nothing to be scared of. Begin your descent. Ooh! Both the Something is approaching. I only have one eye open, you can't... Can you hear me? I've been down here the entire time. So good to see you again. There's plenty of bread down here. Why are you saying anything? I'll never forgive you for what you did. You put in a totally through hell. You desecrated my corpse. Gave them the disgusting hunger. All that water, all that is water under the bridge now. Has it only been two to three days? No, no, it's been like three weeks. Did we kill her? Uh, you know, I think we totally did. Until he's down here, come have some bread with us. 
They always try things like this. Their anger concentrated near their grave. Leads to tricks and traps. You're not falling for this one. Why aren't you listening to me? There's bread down here. You're losing it. Fine. I won't stop you from finding the others down here. One piece of advice. Beware of Karen. I mean, always. She's ill beyond repair. Gregory will try to talk you out of reaching the room. Anatoly will try to talk you into leaving the cabin. And Karen will rip the flesh from your bones. We'll talk again. You feel Mariah leave the staircase. You go deeper into the abyss. I mean, on average, a human can survive for 30 days. I know, but listen! The walls. Down here, they're dirt and soot. Something is approaching. I'm glad I found you. The rain outside has stopped. Did you hear that knocking? Another trap. Everyone's upstairs and wants to leave. Mariah was worried sick about you. Tell Gregor about speaking with Mariah. I guess I can't lie to you, huh? I just stood there while Karen took my limbs, doing nothing. Are you frightened by her? Kinda. Actually, she was the one I wanted to kill first, and then the game wouldn't let me, so... Whatever. If you won't come upstairs with me... Please turn on the light when you reach the room. I want to see the look on your face when that light bulb turns on. Can you do that for me? You nod. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for letting me lick the bowls clean. That was enough to keep him at bay. We'll meet again soon. Beware, Karen. I feel Gregor leaving the staircase. You descend deeper into the abyss. Oh, it's only been two. Uh, yeah, I think it's been like, like, I don't know. Three or four days. The air pressure down here feels greater. You're getting closer to Karen with each step. Something is approaching. Is it the glasses, man? He was peeking at us through the window. Oh. Thought you'd still be fending off that glutton Gregor right now. You tell Anatoly about the meeting with Gregor. Oh. I was going to try and see if you wanted to pick onions with me. You shake your head. Guess there's no fooling you, huh? You survived this long and now you'll, fend off you'll need to fend off Karen. I can't tell if I'd rather have you or her sticking around down here. You ask Anatoly where Karen is. Oh, she's below us. Waiting to devour you. Karen's been practicing on her butchering again. Maybe she'll start with your arms. <laughs> down here, the whispers have told me about you. Can't even believe some of the things you've done. Worse than any war crime. So many whispers about these sorts of things. So many whispers down here. It ends at the bottom. Karen might be alive down here, but you won't be. See you again soon. You feel like I totally leave the staircase. You grit your teeth and keep going. Your feet finally hit solid ground in the basement. Something doesn't feel right. Um, you think? I think it was up to 14 days. Uh, look behind you. Oh, God damn it! It's just puppies back there. You can't get me with this lady. I'm smart. Hello. God damn it, cabbage! Fuck up! You've come so far. Proud of you. Cabbage, we cabbage. didn't jump that. So I want to let you know we have your back. <laughs> cabbage. Remember what happens, so dear. Just call down to us. We'll be there. Boy, 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 Honest. Boy. Wouldn't let you die down here. Where when you least yeast expect it, we'll roll with you. Ha ha ha. You can't sneak up on me. Raspberry! But sneaking up on you? Extremely easy. Are you deaf? Raspberry! Yeah. That was pretty cruel, even for me. Your ears have so much dirt in them, they could probably grow potatoes. Ha ha ha. We'll have to work on those jokes, potato. Sure. Were you hiding in the basement room? Circumstances have changed. I wouldn't mind. Miss a killing for the world. <laughs> Just remember, <laughs> down here, you can call on us. We'll help you out in a bind. And if you get lost down here later, please avoid the room where it happened. I can't speak for the others, but I'd like to forget what happened there. 
I don't think we'll ever forget that potato. But thank you for coming along with us. Boy, boy. I wouldn't call it a change of heart because you really never had one potato. You should have brought it down here, but I'm glad you're here to help. Wish I had a joke here, but what you did was no jokey matter. Oh my god, I'm pretty sure a fucking potato just does murder. This brings a whole new meaning to playing Final Fantasy XIV as a potato. Just like a fucking serial killer. <laughs> Jump it! Jump it's getting positioned behind you, ready for what's next. You feel it around the walls blindly and locate the light switch. Take you long enough. Whoa. So you kept the door locked. Uh, you guys. Hey, he's leader of the trumpets. Can't leave you hanging. All of us are ready to help you out here. See if you ignore my warning to watch out for that knife. <laughs> we survived this fight. We want to play hide and seek again. <laughs> trumpets, help out! Cabbage has filled you with hope. You gained 5 HP. Karen lunges at you. Oh good, I'm being stabbed. You've started to bleed. Are you talking to yourself again? Karen licks her lips. Are you fit in the cauldron? We try throwing a punch. Karen easily die. Oh, we're just gonna fucking die. Yeah, I love being stabbed. It's my favorite thing. Hi, Poon Scoot. Hi, DJ. What in the world? This game is insane, DJ. It's best to watch out for that knife. Karen goes completely silent. Instead of kept the door locked. You dodge Karen's knife, feeling the air hit you. You shouldn't be this fast! Karen looks you dead in the eyes. And then the background from Mother or from Earthbound shows up. Are you fit in the cauldron? Blood? Gross! Your eyes begin to water. What did I tell you about crying? You have this jam. Good luck! This is an ideal time to talk to the trumpets. Karen looks confused, though. We best to watch out for that knife. Ah! Dodge failed. Cut is deep. This will need to be treated if you make it out of this alive. I don't really care who dies down here. You're both pretty awful. Good luck. Tato's words cut pretty deep. It does make you feel a bit better, though. Stop fucking stabbing me, you dumb bitch! We're gonna lose. How do you? Hmm. This is very standard RPG Maker Fair. Onion is so supportive. I do love Onion. Onion, very good. Um, I don't know when she's gonna try and hit me. Should've never left you cry. Secretly, everyone's favorite trumpet, but. I all this to my cousin Cornbread, Raziel. You point out that Raziel was one of Onion's relatives. Oh, it's getting harder and harder to recall any long-term memories. Is Onion my sibling? You shake your head. Oh, good luck. Brad, you gained 5 HP. We're just gonna die, man. I can't dodge that, apparently. Can I just constantly dodge? Apparently not. Poor bread, poor bread! How do I know when to... You know... <laughs> Ah, he was as dangerous as, as the red-haired woman, though. Just an absolute loser. Inside voices, cabbage. Haha, -ha, might not have kept the charade going for much longer, potato. Seeing the trumpets argue like humans makes you feel a little better. You can 5 HP. That's not enough to... <laughs> ah, we're gonna fucking die. 
going to eat those ears first. She tackles you to the ground, plunging the knife into her pretty as she devours your body on the floor of the basement. Your corpse lasts a week. This night I feel is perfect because I'm going to sleep since sorry. It's taking you long enough. Well, it just starts over? Okay. Alright, alright, alright. I can do this. I can do this. Should have killed me earlier. No chance of that now. Listen, you were the first one I wanted to kill, but the game said no. There's just some I can't fucking dodge. Very good. Why is Mary Raspberry is a lie created by Cabbage? You know me by now, and I've never acted Mary. Correct? You nod. Are you going to devour the red-haired woman when you win? Or leave her corpse to sting up the basement? We both know your answer. Let's end this. You feel a flood of emotions from the trumpets. Anger, sadness, joy, determination. Your bones feel quicker, like your reflexes are improved. The Chompettes have imbued a second wind inside you. You get ready for Karen's next attack. Oh, wow, it's animated. Look at that. Wow, we're not fucking around. Also, why are you still alive? I guess there was meat down there. Karen quickly slows down the hallway, turning left at the end. What's in the room? What's in the room? You're hobbling after her, but the room is pitch black here. The rot of decaying flesh is here is nauseating. You can hear small echoes of Karen's footsteps disappearing below, making this room feel enormous. You can't see their eyes, but you can feel them. You're being watched. The staircase in the center winds downward, spiraling into the abyss. You're getting lightheaded again. Gravity almost gets the best of you a few times as you work your way to the bottom. Your shoes stick to the floor when you reach the bottom. The smell of mildew and something rotten makes you gag. You can barely make out the outlines of door frames in each direction. You head east, opening the door. You feel Karen's presence close by. Hi. <coughs> hey, I found our friends! <coughs> Back together again. Drowned and dissected. Butcher of Hope has returned. Where's Karen? Lost in the abyss. Her rage blinds her. Ravenous, completely ravenous. She'll never be able to move on. Bound to this cabin by you, she will never escape. Those that die in the cabin are bound to different rules. Fleeing west did nothing. Victims will always gravitate to this cabin. Always find a way to you. You wretch. You abomination. You horror. Turn on the light and savor your inhumanity. Turn on the light. Turn on the light. She's still here. Reap by your half son. Me reaping. Oh, sweet, awesome. Me sighing. Whoa, what the fuck? Mariah, Anatoly, Gregor, Karen. I'll never forget you. Okay. Hey, I want to see what's in the fucking room. God damn it. Not done yet. Plenty of meat still in those bones. Light now turning on. What do? Yeah, what the fuck? You hear the talking upstairs. Thieves? You grab your flaying knife and silently go up the stairs. She'll eat well tonight. The four look completely shocked at the sight of you. We... She doesn't look like she has the courage to speak. We've been lost for a few days. Your cabin is the only hut we've seen out here. Can we stay here for a few nights? Clear your throat and ask the question you've asked thousands of times. Did you come of your own free will or were you sent? We were technically sent. No, it's totally. We came on our own free will. The woman looks confident in her answer. They answered incorrectly. You clear your throat again, coughing profusely. You may stay in my cabin until you're ready to leave. Hmm. The group looks terrified of you. As they should be. Wasn't that trail steep? 
Yeah. The group finally returns to normal. It's forced, but they attempt to save face. That walk was brutal, but this cabin is amazing. Full kitchen, running water, it really has everything. Finally, a place I can burn a good book of peace. Uh, time loopy. Wow. Raina, check it out. Who are these people? A cabin all the way out here? What about that psychopath? We lost a few kilometers ago, don't worry. Doesn't look like anyone's home. Hello? Come on, Rena's sunsetting. Take shelter here for the night. You sure that's a good idea, Selena? Of course. Front door has a few different ways to lock it. You should keep him at bay if he shows up. Oh, there's some snacks in here. Bullock, I guess they don't have a good choice. I'm back to Zach in the morning. Don't worry about it. Just, just for one night. You decide to join up with your friends inside. New food? New food. Did you lock the door? All set! Can you see him out the window? No, he probably went back to town. Is anyone here? No? Yelled and stopped around? Nothing? Hmm. This cabin is abandoned. Let's stay here tonight. What? Relax, it's gonna be freezing outside tonight. It's either him or us. Let's avoid, let's avoid making a fire. I don't want him to see us in the distance. No fire! There's blankets in the bedroom. We'll be fine, Oleg. This cabin chills me to the bones. We'll need him. Hmm. Whenever Oleg gets nervous, he tells jokes to break the tension. I've got one of Reziel's classics for you. <gasps> hey! Is the middle one cabbage? And is the one on the... right onion? And bread! And bread! What do you call us snowman's kids? Children. Ah! Hey, this is what I've been searching the cabin. You see if you find any food for us to eat tonight. I'll take the bedroom. Leave the living room to me. Right now, search the kitchen. No need to help me. You sure? Of course, I know exactly where to look first. Got the Zacapone Junior Baker Award, remember? All right, everyone. Let's move out. Bread, bread, bread. It's bread, it's bread, it's bread. Maybe new food, but first food, first food. Help the team by searching the cabin for supplies. Your bond with Selena, Oleg, and Bullig is embraceable. Focus on exploring the cabin. Are we potato? What do you want to help out first? Uh, bread. Hopefully Bullig will tell you another joke. Hey, Rena, pretty weird stuff in here. A weird walking stick, a jar of liquid on the bookshelf, nothing edible. What about that yarn? You think I'm eating sewing supplies? Hell no, Bullock. Exactly. What about some shoes? How would you cook shoes? Boil them? Duh. Is this the FNAF thing where you ate your friends and you ended up having some veggies and a loaf? I don't know. Hi, summertime! This is taking a weird turn. I'm into this. I'm invested now. I mean, I was invested before, but I'm still mad they didn't let me kill the lady. Do I look like a shoe eating guy? Mom says I'm a growing boy. Rhubarb, growing in only one direction. Two slash three cup granulated rhubarb. Well, like, what are you? What do you want to search first? All purpose rhubarb. What's with this painting? One a lady spoon, left during a spray orange rhubarb. Good for the crops. Three tablespoons Bullock. rhubarb on fire. One There's nothing interesting rhubarb. on the bookshelf. No point in one reading today. One cross borehole electromagnetic imaging rhubarb. If we can be with the other two. Two tablespoons here. rhubarb juice. Rhubarb. First my book in the fourth year of elementary school. Sosig. You might have a dinner for lunch today? I know it seems to be new. Of course. Bullock, right? Yeah, and you're Rena. Nice to meet you, Rena. St. Math class going. Boys in math class are being jerks. Cosmeros? Yeah. He's a loser. Third grade he crapped himself while singing in a choir concert. Everyone around was gagging, but Selena and I were laughing so hard at that. Selena, yeah, she's already sick today. We've been friends since we were babies. I have to use it to Oleg. He's a class lower than us, but he's hilarious. Ha, ah, sounds good. Got a joke for you. Bullock always liked telling jokes that Rezil taught him. You laugh politely, quickly becoming friends. Sussig. Rena, you alright? Yeah, uh, why is the chessboard turning sideways? Huh. Maybe someone was playing it by themselves? This guy was pretty big for just one person. Maybe there was more at one point. Maybe. 
Rina, uh, are you dying of heat in that coat? Not now. This living room is cold as hell. Haha! It's a big blue blanket on the couch. Maybe Selena would like that one. No, I'm good, Rina! Give it to Oleg! You can have it, Selena! Ah! I tried to be diplomatic. There's two beds here with blankets and sheets! Awesome! Do you want to take one of them, Rina? No, nah, let Oleg and Selena have it. Where are you sleeping, then? I'll take the floor. The floor! Yeah, plenty of practice from home. Practice? Yeah, beds are for our grandparents at home. One of my grandpas, the jerk fake being sick, just to sleep in all the time. When your mom brought back some chocolate, he left to his feet and started doing a dance. That's what's up, Rina! Oh my god, this is... <laughs> the... <laughs> the... Charlie and the Chocolate Factory Grandpa Joe bullshit. Don't sit it, Rina. I can sleep anywhere. I'm sleeping on the rocking chair. Only you want to. Of course. Bullock, you and him leave the living room to meet up with the others. Okay. Okay, team, find anything? Just some old toys in the door. Really old toys. He's definitely Onion. Bullock? I, I found his toy boat under the couch. Let me see that. Grandma made this boat for him. Raziel was here. Oh shit! Their their cousin can tell because of the blue name. Oh, I wasn't paying attention to that. Raziel, the one and only. Could he still be alive here? Seeing him again would bring Grandma back from the brink. We have to find him. Agreed. Crew, we need to search this cabin top to bottom. Let's find Raziel and bring him back to Zekovain. You got it, Selena. Oleg, Oleg, come with me. Let's go look around outside. Rina, look around the cabin. Try to find clues to where Raziel is. The psychopath could still be outside in the woods. If you hear any of us yell or scream, find us, okay? Of course, Selena. Thanks, we'll be listening for you. Oh, we might be Raspberry, actually. Raziel, I'm not sure. That might be the potato. I'll be fine. He was mentioned in the, you know, main thing from bread. Crew, let's move out. I think we are raspberry. Selena Bullock and Oleg leave you to search the cabin. It's fucking creepy as hell. Who's there? Nothing replies back. It sounded like it was coming from the kitchen. You walk over to investigate. Potato's personal personality is that it doesn't care. Hello? You just saw Cabana? I don't speak Spanish! No? I'm not going to sell real menti and burrito. So I look at this here. I don't speak Spanish! Help! Help! Hello. I understood something about a house that's Portuguese. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't speak Portuguese. I can't even recognize Portuguese, apparently. Oops. Nah, no help you, Lisbon. No, not well. I mean, I took two semesters, but it doesn't mean shit. I don't speak Portuguese, help! Okay, 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 okay. I was separated from something. And I think this is I can't swim. Yeah, because you can tell because of the way that it is, I guess. Oh. I think they're trying to warn us that they're eating people. Because of this. Hold on. Oh yeah, yeah, he's, he's, they're telling us to get the fuck out. They're just like, you need to leave. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. Okay, cool. Ah! Drawing is pushed out of the cabinet. Ah! I can't, I can't, ah! 
Door. Thank you. Thank you for this. Also, why are you in the cabinet? Thank you. Looks like someone used a piece of coal to draw this. These bars have a cage staring at a door. Take the cage drawing with you. Oh god! They're in there. Do you see them? They're in the cabinet. And they're gone. And this is goodbye. You're a good drawing for an entity living in a cabinet. Yep. I think it was a pest lunch. Did you see the mouse hole? I see the mouse hole, yeah. So cute. What is the bug in the game? Or the game wants you to look. Well, the character didn't understand what they were saying either, so I feel like I'm safe. <laughs> Rena, we saw something weird down the hill. Looked like an old fence with bones all over the ground. Could have been animal skulls, but we couldn't tell from that distance. Heard some weird whispering before I got back to the front door. Find anything? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Strange whispers coming up from under the kitchen sink. Whispers? Was it a ghost? No, it was worse than a ghost, my dude. I'm not sure. I couldn't understand any of the words. Hmm. Ghost, uh... Bullock attempts to lighten the mood a little bit. Got another of those jokes for you. What a ghost like pouring over their food. Bullock, give up? Gravy! I think the game was originally in Polish. Oh! That makes sense. Heh. <laughs> was probably just the creaking of the cabinet. Bruh, he- The cabinet handed me a fucking drawing, dude. No such thing as ghosts. It seemed pretty real, Selena. Well, if you see it again, let me know. Fence outside was absolutely terrifying. We can't let our guard down here. Yeah. Can we not split up anymore? I agree. I'm scared of getting separated now. Of course, Oleg. Like. We're a team. Teams stick together through thick and thin. Rain or shine. Feast and famine. You're right, Selena. Haha, <laughs> I just don't want to lose any of you, like Raziel. <gasps> That won't happen when we're together, Oleg. Bullock, you're a night owl. Can you stay guard while we sleep? Of course! Thanks, Bullock. Oleg and I will take the bedroom. You okay with the living room? Yeah. Cabbage is still my favorite. Yes. What's the most foreign language in the Eastern European? Clearly, the answer is Portuguese. I like onion. I like onion, too. Thank you, Bullock. Wake up if you see or hear anything. You got it. Bullock and Selena head to the bedroom, opening the door. Fully behind them. You lay down on the couch and quickly fall asleep. Bullshit happens. Close your eyes, I can't stop thinking about the butcher of the third victim probably had it the worst. Stabbed in the stomach like the other two, but this one was different. The body was missing both ears. The investigators concluded it was a copy of a copycat to a series of grisly murders from years ago. What kind of person would take someone's ears? The victim's family neighbors searched the murder scene, top to bottom, and the alleyway is outside. All I can find was a broken window and that the butcher used to gain entry. It was a mystery that nobody in Zekafane could ever solve. So, Selena, Oleg, Oleg Bullock, and you teamed up to find the killer. Selena was naturally the leader, plotting out vantage points from dusty maps her grandfather had. Bullock brought snacks and what he called emergency rations, which was usually crusty bread from his pocket. It's so bread. Oleg was able to get investigated just since grandmother, a former detective, but only after telling her it was to find Roselle. The investigation lasted more than a year, often getting to crime scenes quicker than investigators. You have a strange dream. You found the body early, so early the blood is still leaving the body. Greasy-haired man makes eye contact with you, wiping the knife on his vest. You look for a way to escape, but you're trapped in an alleyway. He slowly walks towards you, forcing a laugh that comes out in unnatural, staggered segments. As he gets closer to you, his pupils are absolutely enormous. Ugh. And as he brings the knife up, his face peels apart by the lips, screeching in pained agony. You wake in a cold sweat. Oh, good. I loved that. Wake up, everyone. Didn't the lady that killed you in the text say she's staring, starting with your ear? She totally did. Bullock, it's like 3 a.m. I heard something outside. It's one of those crows. They never shut up. It's him. Huh? Selena? It's him. What's the plan? Selena makes the group secret hand signal. Only whispering is allowed now. Pull like eyes on the doors and windows. If he makes it inside, run out the front door downstairs. Downstairs. Downstairs? What if there's no r less room down there? Then we need to manipulate the lights down there. Find the light bulb pulley. When he gets close, turn off the lights. 
It's got that knife, so run for the front door where there's an opening. What if there isn't a working light down there? Yeah! Our eyes can see better in the dark than him. Why do you figure that? Why do you, f why do you think that? We can run circles around him while he's blind down there. He doesn't stand a chance. Don't count your chickens before they hatch a leg. Bullet, can you outrun him? Of course! Did you see anything outside the window? Gray doesn't start yet, but he can see storm clouds in the distance. Maybe it'll get too muddy for him? Unless he's coming through one of the windows. The window glass is thick. If he tried to break it, everyone would hear it. Whomst ever built this cabin was definitely here for the long haul. Spoiler alert, it was the murderer. See anything right now? Nothing. We're keeping watch. I found this in the bedroom here. Oh, good. I love this. Art. What the hell is this? Did Rizio make this? It has to have been him. We found the body stuffed into the barrel. That creep saw us and ran. Who would do something like that? A monster. That's right, Rena. That was the last time we saw him. What's that noise? Oh, good. I love this. Go to the staircase now! Point taken! As you run to the staircase, you see him standing by the front door. He wipes his eyes with his sleeves, completely drenched from head to foot. He attempts to smile, but looks completely out of character. You slow down your breathing, making it to the staircase safely. And this is where they all fucking die! Sleen takes out the basement key, locking the door behind you. There, that should slow him down. Can you lead? Of course. Oh, he's determined. Alright, we'll be right behind you. I love how you think you can get out of here. Let's play Ghost in the Graveyard tonight. It's too dark out. What if one of the adults catches us? We're faster than them. Rena, you came to be the ghost first? Why me? Because your eyes can see in the dark the best. The perfect ghost. Selena, haha. Sure, I'll go hide first. Hey, Oleg? Yeah? You're slower than Bullock with a stomach full of herring last time. Pick up the pace this time. <laughs> Trust me, it won't happen again. Nobody trusts you. Everybody laughs. I think they're trying to lighten the mood. We had buying some equipment at the sawmill. It takes a group two hours to find you. Time Selena lets Ghost in the Graveyard already tagged Bullying and Oleg. Ack, eek! You're too fast! Nobody sneaks up on me. We are definitely Raspberry! Nobody! Rena, what's going on? Uh, nothing? Just remembering something? Bullying and Oleg went ahead. There's no time for this. We need to go. You snap out of it and begin your descent. Missy's searching for the key. What an idiot. Most furious for co to be causing that much damage. Oh, like you find a light switch down there? Yeah! Get in position. We'll be right down. Uh, that locked door is keeping him busy. That door is pretty old, though. Do you see the holes in it? He's coming down! Run! Your eyes trying to see further down the staircase. You can't hear him. Bullshit. Rena, we have someone special to introduce you to. Raziel, come on out. Don't be shy, Raziel. Rena, roll bite. Ha ha. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Rena. Uh, they're definitely potato! It's okay. Your cousin is great, Bullock. Ha ha. Just wait, everyone. Give him a little time. He's, he's the world's best puns. He's memorized every single one, Grandma told him. Grandma bought me this book. Raziel, this is 500 pages long. Yeah. Everyone laughs at Raziel. Enjoying a nice meal together with Bullock's family. Raziel tells countless fun jokes, bullets howls, laughter, and the adults shake their heads in agony. His stories infect us, making Zakopane a better city for everyone, except for one. Rena, you're slowing down again. Selena, Raziel, what about him? I, I keep remembering him. I see. I, he, crew, let's keep going. He's so fucking dead. Hi, Bolner! The room where it happened, you saw a place you shouldn't have. What the hell is this? What? The light isn't working. No time to find a weapon here. Let's keep going down. I can see a light further down the staircase. How you doing, buddy? Scary game. Your shoes stick to the floor at the bottom. You can barely make out the light to the door on the right. East? There's three other doors. North, south, and west. 
Selena tries to door to the north first. Locked. This room is tiny. How are we going to get around him? Don't be scared. Let's try the doors and see if we can lock it from the inside. Which way, Rena? Oh god. Oh no. We're north, south, and Dennis. Locked. Locked. The door handle feels oddly warm. Wait, are they all locked? Okay. You. Selena, Oleg, and Bullock throw open the door, turning around to see him. Uh oh. Look, Dennis. Leave us alone. You left the knives upstairs. It's four against one. Leave with your life. Ha ha ha. Say hi to Raziel for me. Whoa. I think we just got myrtled. Raspberry Q, Raspberry Q, we are here. Why? You shut the drawer. Why are we vegetables? We cabbage. They're being held back by their human emotions. They'll need a few months more at the very least. I'm in no rush. Let us leave. Now? You shut the drawer. Yay, that was bad. I'd like to explore the cabin. See where those whispers are coming from. Can I leave the drawer? You nod. Thank you. Wanna come with, Raspberry? I'm going nowhere with you. Haha. <laughs> poor, poor Raspberry. Potato is totally the other guy. Welcome. We've done a few annual jump back comedy competitions since last time. Wanna be the judge this year? Ignore them. I found some fascinating stuff by using the mouse holes. I need you to explain what the hell this is. Uh, well, it's a drawing, clearly. Muscles were important. Yeah. Were you fattening him up? Oh, I wonder he was if he was making potato eat the people. Or were you scaring the hell out of him while you hesitated? You take the basement drawing with you. You you cut off all of his limbs. I would never forgive you for this. You shut the drawer. We cabin. It's time. Jump it. Sound off. <laughs> I love the momentary spasms of horrified faces that appear on the vegetables as you do. So who killed them? The murderer! The murderer man! Who is opening the drawer? <laughs> like my cousin Cornbread says, I'll rise to the occasion. Potato. Potato. You have nothing to give me now. Leave me alone. This is the only way to escape, Potato. We need to leave at the same time. I'm not leaving the cabin. Potato, please. Potato, we want to see... No. Cabbage tries whispering, but you can clearly hear every word. They can release us. Just play along and maybe they'll pity us. Yeah, I'm not working with them. But right now, I pity them. Just an old disgusting, foul smelling... That's enough. <laughs> Potato's words cause a regression to stir inside of you. Keeping those intruders around might be entertaining for now. You slide the door closed, giving them time to stew in their thoughts. Where's the yellow potato? So where are they? I don't know! Wah! Because we're cooking them. I don't know. Who's potato? We have to figure out the mystery. I think we have to run through again. Hey, uh, 
You want to know something? I never thought I would stream an, a, 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 a visual novel because I thought it would be too hard. But this is kind of fun. Hi, damn shit idiot! Potato wanted to live forever with his friends. What a perfectly normal game. Yeah. More VNs, you think? I don't know what just happened. They didn't get killed. They just turned into food after what looked like Potato killed... After what looked like Potato killed the murderer. You know what's fun? Really fun? No. I think we had to go through it again to get the full story. It's one of those. You have a strange nightmare. Ah! Wake up! I said, wake up! The others are causing you to become weak. I love you, pixelated potato! Blow to poop, don't the. Hi, Dipshitty, and thank you for joining the Coop Troop! Welcome to the Coop Troop, Dip underscore shitty. <laughs> Very good, people. This game never ends. I like this. We need to get you back to. back to normal. Let's talk in this hesitation, especially. especially if someone's trying to become stronger than you. That used to make you upset, right? I'm keeping an eye on you. You asked for how long? At this rate? Never. You caught Bruce covering Potato in a fine mist. You're beyond disgusting. So then, are you ready to fight back against the nightmares? Punish the spirits that have made your life a living hell? Uh, yeah. Perfect. Let us give them no quarter. Close your eyes again, and let's begin to traverse the abyss. You relax your muscles, getting ready for what's next. Okay. Endless content, I mean nightmares. Yeah! We can't wake up! Welcome to nightmare mode. If you survive, you'll gain some additional insight to the world of cooking companions, as well as <gasps> unlocking New Game Plus and a Chompette's only event. This mode is mostly just a joke, so don't take it seriously. Oh, the Chompette mode. Okay. From the main menu, if you select New Game, you can immediately jump to this mode. And other ones. If you make it to the end, you'll unlock Chompette Cabin Course. Chompette only event, free of humans. For the true cooking companions experience, this mode should be played in a pitch black room with headphones. Ah! <laughs> If you still need to max out your relationships, don't worry, you'll get the opportunity to do so in New Game Plus. You should really make a manual save right now. Don't hesitate. Okay, I'll do whatever you want, man. Thank you for getting this far. Your bravery is commendable. We'll be rewarded. Thanks for playing. Oh, almost forgot. Nightmare mode activated. You wake up in the bathroom again. Oh, sweet, it's full of blood and shit. Blood toilet. Ah! Oh, come on, man. Don't fucking do this to me. This is my room. Do you see how dark it is? It's cold. But I can look at you. Look at me. Are you scared? I love your pixelated scary face that won't let me click on the button. I love blood toilet. Nightmare, 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 nightmare. You wake in a cold sweat. Your surroundings feel completely different. This game is a lot cooler than I thought it would be. I've been wanting to play it really bad, but I was like, oh, I should wait for Halloween. And I was like, I'm not gonna fucking, who am I kidding? I'm scared reference, is it? Okay. Your surroundings feel completely different. Oh, Mariah's presence is enraged. She's beckoning you to follow her. You get up and leave the bedroom. Okay. It's a beautiful sunny day outside. What a fitting end to such a horrible nightmare. We head to the kitchen for some breakfast. This will take ages to clean. Take a few bites of meat. You lost the more of your humanity. You stare into the ash pile in the oven. Are they still upset. You head back to the bedroom to take a nap. I love napping. My dog, he just walked up to me and stared at me. I asked if he knew he was a little boy and he started freaking out. <laughs> Never a bad time for horror. I'm not, yeah. 
Who? Which one of them is causing this? Mariah? Anatoly? Gregor? K Karen! Curl in the bed and fall asleep. You have a strange dream. Oh, hi, dude. <laughs> Potato mode. What do I click on? Um. Oh! It doesn't matter. We're gonna leave them soon? You nod. Perfect. He knows how to improve on your methods. I hope you share that knowledge with me. So we can outlive even the angriest of spirits. Okay. Wake up, sleepyhead! Karen. Karen isn't here. It sounds like she's whittling something again. Did she escape the basement? Karen? No reply. You head over to investigate. Okay. Another trick by one of them. Who's still missing, Karen? Someone's tapping on the window. Oh boy! I hate when Karen escapes the basement. Oh hey dude, what's up? I can't get the taste out of my mouth. Are you done? To get any more bold in their actions, you had to bed to sleep on it. Oh, I love sleeping! He has the Frexel eyes! He do! four have returned to the first floor of the cabin. Wake up, sleepyhead! Karen? Oh, good. Come with me in the living room! Don't argue! You crawl out of bed to face them. Oh, hey guys. Welcome! We've been waiting all day. We're satiated by this opportunity. Would you like to start the ritual? I mean, sure. What ritual? A ritual to manifest alternative possibilities! Mistakes ended. Regrets unrooted. Let the others depart earlier than me. Let me survive this time. This means... Join hands with us and form this pact. The ritual is unlike anything you've ever heard of. Agreeing to the pact could result in horrors worse than death. Aw, oh, fuck yeah! Anger channeled and linked extremely dangerous. There might be no going back from this decision. Think carefully before making a decision. This might be a good time to save the game. Okay, cool. Thanks. I'll do whatever you want, man. I love horrors worth than death. It's my favorite thing! I saved. Hi, Jesus. We're playing a scary game. Yep. Take my hand. Take Karen's hand. You hold onto both of their hands. Eyes cold to the touch. You've chosen correctly. I'm proud of you. See you soon! Your breathing begins to slow. The frost collects on the windows. One of her eyes roll backwards, causing you to drool a little bit on the floor. Oh, Jesus. We're having a stroke or something. Something has gone horribly wrong! Love this for me. Anatoly picks a sword stick first, leaving the cabin. Then Gregor goes, then Karen. Anatoly, Gregor, Karen. Once the three are gone, it's just you alone with Mariah. Thank you for getting me through all of this. Mariah smiles, eating the meat. Breaks most people, but not her. The storm clouds dissipate. The sun comes out again. I'm so happy the storm clouds have gone away. I, I couldn't have done this without you. Mariah's eyes widen, looking into yours. I want to stay here and take care of you. All my life I've been looking for my true calling, and it was you all along. No need to ask me the question again. I'm here at 75% of my own free will. 65% by compulsion. She answered correctly. How did she know? I bet your arthritis is extremely bothersome. Do you want me to show you a special technique my grandmother taught me to help with the pain? You nod. Great, sit down in the rocking chair and let me get to work. I feel like the meat wouldn't break me either. I don't know, man. You'll get the shakes and your brain will start fucking up. Cannibalism actually fucks you up. Like, I'm not kidding. 
Someone peeped the horror. Ugh. I thought I was having a stroke a few days ago. This game is just my life for real, for real. No! Sitting in your rocking chair, I'm watching Tell as Mara comes back with a towel and a bucket of water. I hope this is the start of a beautiful relationship. Close your eyes and relax. You close your eyes, smiling as Maria gets closer to you and fucking stabs you. Maria throws you to the ground, sinking the knife into your chest. Hey, dude. What's up? It's finally over. No more victims. No more grieving parents. Your reign of terror is over. Dude, I fucking respect that. We should- You know what? Is it just eating brains that causes problems? Oh, I don't know. I thought it was just eating all... Cannibalism really fucks you up. You can trust me. Someone who has eaten people before. Yeah, I know things. You're slowly beating out, but it's taking longer than expected. I'm going to tell everyone in Zacopan about what happened here. Once all the remains are recovered, I'm burning this hut to the ground. I try to get a few words, but one lung has completely collapsed. Don't talk. Your hearing begins to fade in and out as you're losing consciousness. Unlike, I'm taking no chances. I'm going to watch you die in front of me. Very good. You know what? Mariah is the hero we all fucking needed. The real thing is the fuck show up is the horrors, yeah. Brain is where the brown flavor is. Then Ash, your body finally gives out a stain removed off the earth. A storm cloud lifts off of every town. Hooray! Her necklace looks cool. It do. After the events of the Tetra Mountains, Mariah embases her destiny. Lessons of the cabin would break most people, but Mariah uses it to become a stronger person. To bring in Atoli Gregor and Karen, she worked with the Polish government to eventually return home to Ukraine. In April of 1945, Mariah is selected to attend a conference in San Francisco. She was picked over Dmitry Milosevic to represent Ukraine in the first meeting of the United Nations. Selected the first committee, she helped create the preamble in Chapter 1 with the UN. Years later, she would go on to form a committee to investigate typical beings. Using the cabinet as a blueprint, countries around the world begin to document the numerous abnormalities, impacting everything from death rates to food prices. Kabe's investigation revealed that by many historical events were swayed, either directly or indirectly, by these atypical beings. <gasps> Mario provided testimony to the murders the many of the trials that took place. The books and notes found in the cabin gave helpful insight for persecutory efforts around why, though. The horrors are having a major impact on food prices. When she was 85 years old, she became bedridden due to cancer. Surrounded by loved ones, she tells everyone in the room about the cabin. I miss them, and it's only like Gregor Karen, but... I can leave this earth happy knowing I shared the memories with all of you. I'm sure Gregor would be laughing right now. On March 15th, Mariah finally best due to complications. Surrounded by loved ones, her legacy is one of service and warmth. Since so became safe again, children can explore freely. Fucking murder is bad. Yay. The economy is in shambles because of the horrors. Yep. Thanks, dude. I needed that. Cool. Do I actually get to push the buttons? Oh, cool. Oh, there's so many more little thi- What? We haven't seen this yet. I don't want to click on this! That was so good I got to it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was trying not to pay attention. Beauty. Stick just to save points for- Yeah, so you can like do all the endings. Production art. Oh! That doesn't sound bad. Th I don't like pomegranates. So this means you technically played a vor game? Don't you have to eat somebody whole for it to be vor and not just cannibalism? I was afraid that clicking on the potato was going to cause a horrible jump scare. Okay. 
candy. Okay. There you go. There it is. You gotta Kirby someone for it to be bored. Yeah. There's no music. <laughs> okay. It is close to 11, though. So what happened at the end? Why was... Uh, we, we did, like, a ritual to turn back time and make her live. And then, uh... Yeah. Oh, can I show you guys what happens when you run the game? Here, hold on. I'm going to close it. I'm going to open it back up. I will stretch. Oh, God damn it! Okay, that didn't happen last time, okay? The music is gone. Okay, so before it had like chipper music until the music started to get fucked up and it just started to whisper at you. Um, you just selling farm sims? Oh, uh, cool. I, I don't want to buy any more games at the moment, though. Uh, there's a couple of farm sims that I already have that I don't play, so. Yeah, that's great. Well, I don't want to get into another should should we do like another run or what did they say i couldn't hear oh it wasn't in english new coach new phone no money yeah do you have time well i mean like another day but the thing is if we did another run wouldn't we i guess we could just load from that save to get the other endings or something Yeah. Okay. I can't believe there's no music. Oh my god. Uh. Here, you can have this. The title screen originally have. Oh no, the title screen was originally like really chipper. I mean, what was the other ending? We don't know. And so many. Yeah, we're missing a lot of shit. So I guess we could go back some sometime and and do it. Get out of here, Gregor! Fuck off. Okay, let's find somebody to raid though. It's time, and my voice hurts. Holy shit! I've never done a visual novel stream. I was worried it would be boring and that nobody would like listening to me read stuff off. fun <laughs> okay it's just listen normally it's not on my crotch okay here it was the opposite of boring okay 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 love the end streams all right all right oh god damn it get the fuck out of here you stupid bitch get oh good the sound's back I mean, I have three express. Oh god, I'm so sorry. I'm oh, so thanks, Chura. Shut up. Don't. I thought it was today because I wanted to see the end. Well, well, then we'll definitely like do the other endings. Oh god. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. I'm gonna leave now. Okay, let's go find somebody to raid! I closed it, I closed it, I closed it, I closed it, okay? I wanted to be in bed hour ago, but it got interesting, right? I was like, oh geez, I'm... I'm invested now. Uh, what do we got? Hope this means more VNs. Yeah. Um. I. I wanted to. 
I'll probably have to like take a break between them just because my throat feels kind of raw right now. Um, but that works because tomorrow's a mute stream anyway. So, also, also, uh, my three year anniversary is coming up. Like, this Sunday. I don't know if I'm gonna do a, something Sunday or just do a stream on Monday and call it the anniversary stream. Uh, but I don't think we'll do anything special because doing special things stresses me out. I will ju I'll just show up and I'll be like, hello. Okay, tell I say hi. Bye. Yeah, I'll be the special thing. Well, hi, you puppies. Oh, are you gonna go inside? Okay. Thank you for not making any sudden noises during that game, buddies. I would have, like, pissed my pants or something. Okay, bye!